go live. Going live. Oh, I don't hope so. Yeah, good, right. <laughs> I should hope so. I, I clicked on the wrong button. I, I, I hit go live from OBS instead of from the YouTube control panel. And uh -huh. the last time we did that, everything went horribly, horribly wrong. And I was like, oh, I hope we're live now. So I shall now look at the chat to see if people are going, oh, look, it's people. Uh, see, I was half expecting you to say, oh, no, that was the wrong button because you'd gone live and clicked insert ads at the same time. Oh, yes. <laughs> In a wild nope. flurry of the, clicking. The, there's just immediately a response from Spud and going, late, you're late. That's what you sound like, Spud. <laughs> Hello everyone, how you all doing? It's go time, it is. Um, okay, right, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a, something to sit on. Um, Caradog is just doing the coffee, and we shall get started. Um, so yes, we have excitement. I didn't think we were gonna have anything to do today. And then uh, a box showed up with one of these in it, and I was like, ooh, he got one. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I'll let Caradog tell the story if there is one. I suspect the story is, well, I found one in stock and clicked buy. Um, however, ugh, all the same. Right. I have a blurry test bed. Yes, focus point is on our faces instead of the test bed, but um, it's not terribly exciting anyway. It's, well, you know, it's, know. it's, the, it's the bench. It's the big red bench. It's, it's Clifford. Clifford, the big red bench. Yeah, this is Clifford now. I've just decided. That's his name. And have to rename the Windows installation. Sure. <laughs> Not to be confused with the brand of car alarm. Um. <laughs> that would be quite the car alarm. <laughs> beep, beep. Beep, beep. Clifford appears. <laughs> I was like... I was wondering, like, I was, I was aiming for a sensible chuckle, and you looked like you had a joke on the go, so I was like, okay. Uh, right. Windows 11, the big blue box. Indeed. Uh, okay. Look at the cider stash. Yes, indeed. Um, we're, we're growing a collection. It's pretty good because the past couple of weeks we've been buying... Go for it. Um, the past couple of weeks we've been buying like three for five. So we've had some spare bottles and I got an enormous crate of Aspel or Aspol or Spool. I, I don't know. Um, Aspel cider um, for like a, a crate for 20 quid. So we've got lots of Aspel. Uh, so that's probably what we're drinking today because I haven't had it in, in a hot minute. And I don't, Carol, you said you've never had it, have you? Let's, uh, let's just do that for a moment because we don't need that right now. So, yeah. Um, good. Um, it's not going to be an arc of triumph. Oh, here come the burns. We'll find out. We don't know. Um, yeah, we, we're gonna um, we're gonna do stuff and things. Six forty by four eighty res time, maybe. So um, yeah, so here, here's the premise for today. Um, uh, I'll say the premise, and then you can tell us about sourcing this because I thought you hadn't got one, but um, whatever. But um, uh, so the first thing we're gonna do today, um, once we've waffled for a bit, is. We're the only thing I've done. The only thing we've done with this is open the box, take a picture of it, take the card, and be like, "Oh yeah, that's that's a graphics card," and put it back in again. Um, so we're going to do an out of box experience with this. We've got our test bench. Um, we're going to take it out of the box, install it, and we're going to just see what that experience is like. Is it going to go horribly wrong? Is it going to throw up errors? I just. Have they fixed the drivers? We don't know. We're going to find out. Let's just see if someone goes out and buys one of these cards, what can you expect from it, basically? Um, and then we've got some other stuff that we're going to experiment with a bit later on, like what does it look like setting up OBS to encode with this and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the plan. Um, so before we get to this, um, before we get to that, during the week, like you, you've been you've been saying for ages that when when the top arc comes out, you're going to buy one. Yes, um, and I did. Indeed, yeah. It However, like yeah, during the week, the last time I saw you talking about it was you just going, "No one has one. Scan has still have no mention of it. I don't know what's going on." Yes. And then the next thing that that I knew of it, this arrived on my front bench by delivery. So yes, what happened? Um, so it appears that the Arc GPUs hmm. are being sold 
by a single retailer in each region. And that's it. What's our region? Like, Are we UK or Europe? Uh, each, sorry, each country. Okay, yeah. Um, kind of like with the Founders Edition, how yeah. that went to being scan only and that got linked through the NVIDIA website straight to a special portal on scan. Yeah. This is slightly different in that there's no Intel website pushing you to eBuyer, but it's a case that it does seem to be just eBuyer. Yeah. It's able to um, sell them. Uh, and I've entirely forgotten who it was. Um, oh God, what they called Eurogamer had an article um, just telling you which company it was was the supplier in each region or mm. each country. Um, so yeah, so there, so there was that. It was just a case of interesting that there was a single one. But yes, basically it was a case of I saw because I was flicking through the usual websites, you know, Scan, eBuyer, Overclockers, um, Box, AWD, etc. Seeing mm. which ones even just had an Intel section for graphics cards. Yeah. Uh, and I was going through there, and I saw one on eBuyer, and I saw it for pre-order. And basically, I waited until the end of Wednesday, just because I had another conversation going with possibly a different sourcing. And then about halfway through the afternoon, it was a case of didn't hear anything. So it was just a case of I bought one on pre-order from eBuyer. Yeah. Um, and eBuyer said that they're expecting to get them yesterday, mm. I think. So I was just like, oh, well, I'll get Saturday delivery on that then here. Fair enough. And did. Um, and then it was a case of, yeah, it, here it, is. it turned up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Fair enough then. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I've just found the list. Yeah, so it's eBuyer in the UK, CyberTech in France, LD, oh, LDLC in France, PC Componentes in Spain, Complete for the Nordics, Notebooks Billinger for Germany. I'm sure that's not how you actually pronounce it with a German accent. And then Computronic for Poland. Mm. Uh and then Newegg and Micro Center for the US, Canada Computers and Memory Express, Express for Canada. And that is the end of my knowledge. Fair enough. Yeah. All right then. So, yeah. However, yeah, there it is. It's it, it exists. And yeah, it's it's the big blue box as well. It's it's kind of nice that it showed up and it's just like the ones that you see in the review videos, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. Like there the are no partner there are no partner cards listed for this yeah. either. It, it's kind of not because, you know, like whenever you see reviewers and they've got nice fancy boxes, a lot of the time that's a press box. And that's not the one that you're actually going to get. That's the one that they've sent to the press to wow the press, you know. Yeah, um, however, it's nice. And I mean, obviously, like the founders boxes are very nice as well. Um, but yeah, with this one, you know, we've got the, the real experience. So, you know, you open it up and it's a it's a it's a nice box uh, and it's got the card nicely presented and that like that's really nice when you just cut the tape on the front you open it up and just there it is there's the card and you're like oh that's what I've bought mm, you know, absolutely that that's what you want to see it's obviously a high end product box with what is ultimately a reasonably low end product yes in it, which and is marginally awkward yeah. I th because it's a similar style kind of boxing to the, what the Founders Editions came Absolutely. in. Absolutely, yeah. And it's the same with the, you know, the actual cooler as well. The cooler is very extravagant for a low-end product. Yeah. And it's a case of, I, and I think that's one of the reasons, this is the thing, like lots of people don't care about the performance of this card, but this card is extremely interesting because of the circumstances of its birth. Yeah. And if Intel, you know, if, if Arc does continue and if it if it does survive through to be to actually re re releasing um competitive products um mm. then this card will go on to have a very interesting story of the troubled birth of arc yeah. and how but they did actually manage to get one onto the shelves you know yeah um, absolutely and i think yeah that's why i'm very interested in this like the, no one cares about the 4090, quite frankly. It's a 4090, it's bloody fast, and it's bloody expensive. That's what we expected. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. However, got... yeah, this guy, this is the one I want to talk about because it's interesting, mm. you know. And 
I'm expecting it to be very difficult to get to work, but when it does work, for it to be yeah. quite competent. Cool. Certainly on the because of all of the like fixed function hardware stuff that's in there, because obviously there's there was a significant focus on uh, the video encoding, the video decoding. Mm. So it was just yeah, if it does actually get to a point of having decent software support. Yeah. It will be very good for that. Yeah. And because it's reasonably inexpensive, it punches quite high up the other stack. Yeah. You know, up compet competitive competitors' products stacks because of that fixed mm. function focus. I'm interested in um I'm interested in like there's been lots of talk about using it as a video encoder for Twitch streamers and stuff like that. And while I don't think we're going to be there yet because obviously Twitch doesn't support AV1 yet. So the discussion about it, about it is purely theoretical. Mm. However, uh, and a lot of focus was put on a support for um, how good it would look at low bit rates. Like L the LTT video about it, yeah. um, they specifically focused on the fact that it looked good at low bit rate. Yeah, it's I'm a not three and a half thousand, which... Yeah. So I'm I'm not super fussed about that because it's not too difficult to get like um, Twitch support up to six meg last I checked. Um, oh, that's good. And okay. um, and most people who are serious streamers have got six have got ten meg upstream. So six meg yeah. is not difficult to do. Um, however, because that six meg is a hard cap, like I'm streaming at um, five at the moment, and I'm actually going to up it to six um, tomorrow as an experiment, again, because it came up in conversation, but I digress. Mm. Um, uh, however, I noticed that my NVENC encoder is maxed out. I've got it on the maximum quality profiles already, mm. so I can't get any more quality on Twitch than I'm already achieving. What is your output resolution? Uh, 720. Yeah. Which and would it be worth increasing that to 936 as well? I was wondering on doing that going up to 900p because apparently you get slightly better, you get a better fidelity because it has nicer scaling to it. And there's a very complicated, apparently the scalers fit to 900p really nicely yeah. and you get less scaling artifacts yeah. um, than you do going down to 720p. Yeah. Um, it's so, also just a case of obviously it's more pixels. Yeah. Um, which will help a little bit yeah, when it's you've already maxed out the bandwidth. Yeah, it's a trade-off of pixels versus bitrate because yeah. lots of people have said, oh, what? because someone asked me, why aren't you streaming at 1080p? And I'm like, because I'm at, set at 5 megs per second. Yeah, um, you know, yeah 5 me megs per second. Um, going up to 1080p, there'll be more pixels, but there's also going to be a lot more uh, compression artifacts yeah. because it's a higher-res picture at the same bitrate. There's the same amount of information there at the end of the day, so it's it's a trade-off. Um, however, um, uh, the uh, the 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 important thing is that because we are bandwidth constrained on Twitch, mm. going to a higher quality codec will actually make a significant difference. Yeah. Well, certainly a codec that provides better quality at, at a, the same at bit the rate. same bit rate. Yeah. yeah. So to that extent suddenly having a dedicated encoder card that can do a specific codec for me is definitely interesting. Mm. If you told me that I could spend, uh, what, £150 for the A330 or the A, or whatever the, the other was? The A380, something like yeah, 150, 180 yeah. quid, yeah. something like that. Yeah, if you could tell me that I could spend, a say, £150 on a encoder card that would, that would noticeably increase my stream quality, Mm. Um, and also technically get me a little bit more top-end performance because my graphics card is no longer doing the encoding, um, that would be fairly yeah, that would maybe. be fairly thing. Because NVENC does, it, it's a very low footprint, but it does add a bit of overhead. It's very mm. small, but it is there. Um, so, yeah, as I say, that, that would be interesting. But, you know, as I say, I think this is, this is purely academic until Twitch actually roll out AV1 support. Which they are behooved to do hmm. quite quickly because it will save them money. Yeah, the sooner they do it, the sooner they save money. But yeah, which I, is I, obviously not the heard... only motivator they have. Yeah, I've not looked, but I've not heard yeah. of any actual timeline for that. So it's a case of, you know, if it's going to take them another year to actually roll out AV1, 
then there's zero point in rushing out to buy an Intel Arc to do AV1 encoding when Twitch aren't actually going to support it for maybe a year, I don't know, you know, because um, by then there'll be other ones available or secondhand cards or something like that. Yeah, so absolutely. I, one, one of the things is I think the current media frenzy from places like LTT raving about AV1, this is in good and it's important and they are correct. It is exciting, mm -hmm. but we're not there yet. So don't rush out and buy one for that quite yet. But it's but, also it's also a case of YouTube supports AV1. That's true. Yes. Um, so if you're if you're YouTubing, then it could yeah. very well be relevant. But yeah, because YouTube, as far as I'm aware, supports AV1. Mm. VC VC9. Um, I think it's VP9. VP9. VP09. Yeah. VP09. yeah. Um, and obviously X264. Yeah. Um, and because. Yeah. Incidentally, fun fact: we are we are upscaling to fourteen forty p today, deliberately because it will allow us to get. Does it force AV one, or does it just allow as us to get far, AV one? As far as I can tell from the help documents in the Google in the hmm. in the YouTube Studio, which were last updated in twenty seventeen. Hmm. Thanks, Google. Um, AV one requires a certain number of subscribers that they don't tell you. Yeah. Or a resolution above 1440p. Yeah. For, sorry, 1440p above. and above. Yeah. 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 So theoretically, we should have um, an eight. Uh, we should. Oh, uh, Liam in Wales, is that confirming? Are you getting the AV1 option for this stream right now? Because if so, that means that our experiment has worked by force by by upscaling to 1440p. We're not we're not recording we're recording at 1080, but we're upscaling to 1440. However, the idea is is that obviously we're losing some detail in the upscale to 1440p. However, because we've uh, because we've gained the AV1 encoder, theoretically YouTube may be butchering the quality less, so we may end up with a net better quality video. Um, but again, we're just experimenting. So yeah. Uh, I'm getting VP9. Fair enough. Could we have had VP9 at 1080? Yeah. VP9 is the standard one. Mm. Okay, don't know then. Yeah, I would assume that the live stream will be VP9, yeah. because VP9 is less computation computationally intense, Yeah. so it would have lower latency. Okay. However... The VOD will get AV1. The VOD should be an AV1 yeah. encode. Of okay, that. So, so we'll know the answer to this after we wrap up, then, yeah, basically. basically. Well, when the VOD has finished processing, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. 4K, please. Yeah, that probably won't happen in a hurry because we're not we're not investing in a 4K cinema camera. <laughs> so. Yeah, to get 4K, I would need a new camera. Yeah, um, because that camera can do it, but it it's basically it can do it for 30, 35 minutes at a throw, and then heat becomes an issue. And mm. I'd need to basically get the one that's got a fan in. So this YouTube channel would need to bring in what three and a half thousand pounds worth of additional income. To then be able to afford to purchase one. Yeah. So it's kind of at that point. Yeah. Why not invest in a fifty thousand dollar camera? Why yeah. indeed? Why indeed? So yeah. <laughs> Excellent, Paul. I'm glad you can see every one of the chin hairs. You might be able to see the the elusive grey hair that's that's in my beard occasionally when it hasn't fallen out. So yeah. <laughs> Very good. Next week, Caradog puts a liquid cooler on his camera. Yes. Hmm. I was I was looking at because DIY Perks did a mm. uh, video on was that was that the same model? I as yours? think it's the same model. Yeah, it's very similar. Or, it's not exactly yeah, the same it, one. it might be. You know, it's it is a Canon mirrorless of approximately the same age. Yeah, and it was um, yeah, it was a case of he he modified his, and I was just kind of looking at that, going, eh, I mean, that's feasible. But it's just kind of a case of that's also effort and warranty breaking, and the channel doesn't have the income to make yeah. making it also, worthwhile. Also, while it's a nice to have, but I don't feel like it's going to. Um, I don't feel like it actually uh, improves the content in a meaningful way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you see what I mean. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's also a case of you'd need. 
to have fiber here yeah. to then be able to yeah, do it at we, a bit rate that makes sense because we'd need yeah. to go to 14 megabit that's right minimum yeah and preferably more like 30. we've got 20 megabyte upstream here so yeah. you know like 14 is achievable um but also i don't know how reliable that 20 up is i don't know if it's like i'm pa i'm paying for up to 20 upstream yeah but it's entirely possible that in reality i'm probably getting 17 18 so in which case if we try to stream at say 15 we're getting awfully close to the actual upload there. It's the also problem... just because because of a number of times we need to download something on exactly stream and things that. like that, and that, that, it would just mess both up. Yeah, and that then brings in the issue of the moment we access a website, the stream stutters because we're maxing the, the connection and yeah. So, wah, 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 wah. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Um, so yes, it's, it's a point of interest, but not something we, that there's actually any intention of doing. The yeah, moment. the the only intention is to when Gigabit mm. is actually available for the shop is to have it. I think. Yeah, basically, as I say, just I, because the I cost variance is actually reasonably small. Yeah, I renewed the internet this week, and I, I if Gigabit had been available, I'd have bought it. Yeah. Um, but I checked the availability, and they said it's not available here. Yeah, it's going to be at some point, but that but it wasn't available, and I needed to renew the internet. But well, I could have stayed where we were, but. It was costing me money to not renew effectively. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that was the other thing. They did offer a free upgrade to Gigabit when it becomes available. That's why I pulled the trigger uh, on it. Ah, oh, yeah. cool. Because yeah. it was a matter of like, I was out of contract, but going into a new contract would only save me like four pounds, five pounds a month or something like that. So I was like, I might, I, I'd be paying an extra five quid a month to stay out of contract. To then instantly um, be able to go Gigabit, mine. Exactly. Yeah. However, um, while I, when I was looking into the Gigabit upgrade on, BT, on the BT website, it said if you have this package or higher, you can get a free upgrade when it is available. Yeah, and I was so like, well, that's the package I'm getting. So yes, so we're fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, it's, it's on the way. It's on the way. Um, so yeah. Right. Well, with all of that waffle out of the way, should we start looking at this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so... Um, I think what we should do is plug this in, turn this on, just prove that all of this works. Hmm. Pop that out, stick that in, and then just see what happens. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, then. Um, right, I'll give you... I'm going to unplug... Is that in to capture? Yes. Um, oh, yeah, we actually need the capture yeah. card. Yes. I'll grab the capture yes. card. That's fine. Yes, okay. Yep, cool. You're going to grab the capture. Yep. Uh, there's a long HDMI in the, in the, in the display cable box. That shouldn't be too buried, I hope. Oh, it's the... Okay. Uh, right, I will have a look in the thing. Cracker open, gents. Yes. Let's see how we do there. And yes, it is an Intel Arc card. We're, we're going to test it. Um, we're gonna... So for those of you who are just joining in, um, we've got an Arc A770 here, brand new retail. Um, and uh, yeah, basically our objective is to have a look at what the out-of-box experience is like. So we've seen the reviews. We know the review drivers were sketchy as hell. This is a retail card um, that, it, that an average person can go out and buy today if it's in stock. Um, so we're going to see what that experience is like. Have they fixed the drivers? Will we actually run into the problems that other people have seen? Who knows? Stay tuned, folks. Do not attempt to adjust your television sets. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, da, da, da. Oh wait, no. Do we use fiber for the long HDMI cable? Uh, yeah, we've got a. Uh, how long is the is the long boy? Is it twenty or thirty meters? It might be a thirty meter one. Yeah, we've got a HDMI cable that goes from one corner of the room to the other for the camera. It goes up across the ceiling, and <laughs> that is a fiber optic HDMI cable, and it works great. Yeah. We, we haven't had a we haven't had a peep out of that cable. It no, just works absolutely. every time we plug it in. It was it was actually a really good investment. So we don't have a HDMI trailing across the floor like we used to. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's also meant that just kind of it can live there. Yeah, it, it it's meant that the tripod and the camera setup can just stay in place and all we have all Caradog has to do is just take the camera off the tripod when we're not podcasting. Um so yeah, that was a really sweet setup. 
The, the other stuff for like HDMI capture for the bench and stuff like that, we've just got bog standard braided HDMI cables that we run as we require when we need them for that. So, uh, so yes. What's the RTP price of it? Um, do you, yeah, do you mind sharing? How much did you pay for this? Um, I think the card is effectively three nine. Yeah, three nine nine ninety nine. Yeah. So then I paid four oh five, including delivery and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So four oh five delivered. Four oh five in our hands. Yeah. So yeah, I mean for the class of card, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's. Um, I mean, it's not. It's not daylight robbery, but it's a case of, uh, yeah, that's that's the cost of a 6600 XT, which it ain't going to match. Um, so, yeah, that's some, um, it, it, yeah, it's not awful, uh, but it's, yeah, it's not a recommended price. Like, if you were buying, like, this isn't a card that we would say to people, yeah, you could buy one of these, that's good value. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. <clears> hmm. <throat> Hmm. Will there be a ceremonious unboxing of Intel's GPU? Um, uh, well, as much as we can do, at the very least. Um, oh, you, it's in there, isn't it? I was going to steal the antennas. Yeah, uh, well, that's not doing anything. You could unscrew yeah. them from the back. Or failing that, hang on a sec, I've got a box of more of them. Oh, do you? Yeah, I bought a couple of those cards, didn't I? So, um... Uh, oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh... Easy P. Uh, where the hell did I put them? Dell 65 watt. Uh, oh, that's not it. Where <laughs> the Jeffries did I put them? I had I had a couple of these in. Oh, there it is. PCI Express Wi-Fi. Cool. Yeah, because I for, um, I meant to bring up the uh, spare one I've got. So I've got a spare gigabyte. Uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth add-on for the motherboard because I already made a motherboard oh, yeah, yeah. without accessories, and then they gave me a full set of accessories. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You can get sixty Ti Founders Editions brand new. That's a that's a good way to get a, a um, thirty sixty Ti. Yeah. The Founders Edition cards are not amazing, but they're fit for purpose, you know. Um, so yeah, like if you really want to get the best that you possibly can out of your card, the Founders okay. Edition won't help you there because they the cooler on them just isn't quite enough. Um, however, you will get a very good experience. As I say, I run a Founders at home um, and I undervolt it slightly to keep the heat down and the noise down. But, you know, the performance is great, so, yeah. We have 1080p. Is this what happened to this Crosshair board? It's regulated to a desk bench. That's no offence. I mean, that's what it's for. Well, no, kind of. I don't know. Maybe. It's not very good at a, best, at a bench motherboard, quite frankly, at the moment. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There is a driver for the graphics card. Okay, good. So the bench is working, and it's working in a predictable fashion. So to all intent yeah, and purpose, this is a gaming PC. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, okay. And right. just a case of demonstrating that there is an NVIDIA driver installed on there, mm. and I'm going to do absolutely nothing. Yeah. What happens if we don't do any prep work? We just slap it in and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also, I just want to confirm, yeah, we are running reasonably good RAM timings as well on here. Cool. Um, Just okay. a point to minimise some issues on that front. Right. Um, oh. I'll quickly, just so people can see it, I'll just quickly show people the actual card. So then once we've shown off the card and you've seen what it looks like, I mean, you all know what it looks like anyway, but we'll do it for posterity. And then we can actually just chuck it in there and get going. So let's go to um, bench cam with face. Um, so actually, let's turn off the face for a sec, just because it's covering stuff. There we go. Um, cool. So here's the box, and you open it up, and there's the card. Um, so uh, the card is it's modest. It's reasonably long for the class of card it is, um, but again, it's got lovely soft touch plastic on it. Feels like a really premium product. There's a 3090 for comparison. So yeah, actually, it's not dwarfing it, is it? 
like d this is a very the 3090 is an enormous graphics card yeah and like size comparison it's within a shout kind of thing that's not quite as absurd as one would imagine let's just move that up a little bit there we go that's not as quite as absurd as you would think for a 3090 and a 1060 compact and then yeah i've got it yeah then a 10 that's a 1060 compact so yeah, just for size comparisons, it's, a, it's an averagely sized card. However, although it's reasonably long, it is, um, it's fairly low. It lines up with the top of the PCI plate, and that means that it will fit into most things without problems. Um, so yeah, lots of plastic, lots of plastic. Um, but apart from, I mean, the plastic, you don't, you know, it's what it looks like is really what matters, to be honest. Um, because you, you're not going to be touching and handling it all the time. Other than that, it's yeah, it feels like a really it's a really nicely presented product. This um, back panel looks nice as well. Nice black PCI Express plate. Yeah, um, that's about it. It's a graphics card, really. That's it. So yeah, um, it's not going to change your world, but it's a it's a nice graphics card. Um, Intel have done a good job of making um, of making a quote unquote founders edition that represents what their their vision, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, they, and they presenting it in a good material light. In yeah. a good actual sort of hardware. Light. That's it. Um they they know how they know how to manufacture a product. Mm, you know. Absolutely. They're demonstrating that they actually know how to do yeah. um industrial design here. So interesting there, just four holes on the back. Uh, yeah. Oh well, right. I shall come around. For you and to I be shall... able to have some sort of brace, not that you'd overly want one. Maybe. All right. Is that camera pointing in vaguely the right direction for the bench? Uh, yeah. You can go down. It's here at the moment. Yeah, I was aiming for a wide shot. So, uh, that's it. Let me see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's basically what I was after. I might actually, if I take it a little bit further toward the box, we can fit in base cam if we switch to that as well. Just deliberately offset that a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's go back to um, face cam with bench. Face cam with bench inverted. There we go. Cool. Um, in fact, I don't think we actually need that for now. Right, so in it goes. Not serviceable friendly, no. If you want to take it apart to repaste it and stuff like that, good luck with that. I think that is definitely a downside of it. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't service a graphics card in its lifetime. Um, that's an uncommon thing to do. Um, ho however, it, it's something that Intel need to keep in mind for future models. When these things actually become competitive cards that people are using for serious gaming and they want to start overclocking and stuff like that, um, that cooler is going to be very unfriendly. Um, however, I suspect that... Um, I think future models are going to be a lot better built. Um, I think... Because this product, again, it had a very troubled launch and I would imagine that stuff like the cooler design was done very, very late game, where they were just constantly having to revise yeah. the boards and stuff like that. That's my guess. Uh, is it eight pin? It's eight plus six. Yeah. Ooh, that's very pretty though, isn't it? Uh, the diffusion on the RGB is not perfect. But mm. it's it's a nice glowy ring, and there's some illumination in the fans there. So, does the Arc logo light up? Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of neat. We have a picture. Yeah. It functions as an output device. Yeah, well, we haven't immediately run into issues where it's just not posting or isn't giving a picture on the monitor. Yeah. Um, it's got some nice, the RG, just going back to the RGB for a moment, it's got a little bit of lilac traveling through the blue. So for a default RGB setup, that's quite pleasant to look at. It's a very Intel color scheme. Yeah. And if it's you, a very good Intel yeah, color scheme. If you were running a blue or a purple setup, 
then that would just drop straight in with no with no config. I like the slight animation effect on the default for that. Yeah, I think that's it's the tasteful. same. It's the same on the fans. Yeah, there's a lot of like, dots spinning around on there. Hmm. Uh, that. All right, we don't have we don't have capture. Let's go with capture. Uh, let me try reinitializing the XL one. There it is. Yeah, that's just a capture card um, thing. Um, Stupid blue bling. Uh, because it's a gamer graphics card, Paul Daniels. It's a gamer graphics card. Where does um, it show you optional updates? Yeah. What was that flickering there? Oh, we're not we're not on drivers anyway, so actually it's irrelevant. Oh, is yeah. It? Is it? Hang on a sec. What? It's dropped the capture again. Hmm. Weren't uh, weren't uh, Linus Tech Tips having issues with capture from these? Uh, no, GM was saying it didn't work with most of their monitors. Yeah. At random points. I think at some point, because uh, Linus Tech Tips, they did a, a live stream where they were gaming on one of these, and I seem to remember they were having capture issues. Interesting. Oh, there's view mm. option updates. Driver updates. One more time. Intel.net. Interesting, is it? All right. Well, I'll leave the capture box there, um, and we'll try it again in a moment. We're, we're, we're currently trying to get drivers through Windows Update. We're just because that's how most end users would do it. Yeah, we're just these days on if, Windows 10. If we dropped an Nvidia card into here, Windows Update would find a driver and install it. It won't be the latest driver, but it'll work, and you'll be able to play games. So, can does will that happen? So yeah, let's try that. Unfortunately, this installer Windows is out of date, mm. <laughs> so there are several it's flicking through. Oof. Um, Luckily, it's a um, very fast computer. <laughs> yes. We are getting through the updates reasonably quickly. Very well. Um, let's try, let's see. Uh, which driver ship with card? We don't know yet. Um, I mean, there's nothing There's nothing in the box. There's no CD in the box. You've got to download the software. Yeah. Um, also so interesting, the SSDs aren't appearing. Um, oh, okay. Are we on stock BIOS? Uh, should be, yeah. They're yeah. also not in disk management. So they're definitely not being... Maybe. Oh, uh, a mm, possible PCI? No, that, that we're on we're on slot one, so it'll go straight to the CPU anyway. Yeah, so yeah. That can't... But they weren't showing up on the mm. thirty ninety with the thirty ninety in either. Yeah. So it's not an Intel problem. It's just a note they're not showing up on this motherboard. Yeah. So clearly we'll have to do That's a fiddle. Um, yeah. So. Um... Uh, should we be running DDU first or uninstalling the uh, into the NVIDIA drivers? Uh, technically, we should uninstall, Maybe. but however, the thing is, is again... I've if, never had to do that before yeah. when swapping a graphics card. On, on, on computers in here, I've swapped out graphics cards and swapped between AMD and NVIDIA, never had to do a DDU, never had to even bother uninstalling the old driver. Um, like, if I've switched... A computer from, say, a AMD GPU to an NVIDIA, and it's going to keep the NVIDIA one. I will then uninstall the AMD driver afterwards, just to clean up afterwards. But I've had computers with both sets of drivers installed and swapped between yeah. cards, and it's not an issue. Like a lot of people are just like, "No, you have to DDU anytime you update your drivers." No, you don't. Yeah, you, you absolutely don't have to. You only need to do yeah. that if you're having problems. Yeah, so absolutely. That's the thing is, um, so I'm we're trying to reproduce that thing here, like because we can sit here and spoon feed this, and it will probably start working. But that's the thing is, just that's the question is, do you need to spoon feed it? Yeah, I'm you know? viewing this from the point of view of my my semi technical friend who is capable of plugging in a GPU into a slot. Yeah, can they fit the Lego brick into the Lego brick sized hole? Yeah. If you told someone, yeah, Intel have got a new GPU and it matches your price point, go and buy one. Yeah. What are they going to do with it? You know? I mean, this is also specifically relevant to the two of us. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so, let's see what happens. I'll see oh if the capture God. card All wants them. to run again yet. 
This is what happens when you don't update. Ah, we've got capture for a short amount of time. Interesting. If I if I minimize this window and then bring it back up, does it disappear? Yeah, again? we've just lost capture. Interesting. I wonder if it right. How, how is that? How is that a thing? How is minimizing a window disrupting capture? Because that window, that yeah. window is settings, which is Windows 10 Three settings, accelerated. which is like the accelerated thing. So I wonder if you disable and re-enable, you'll get the desktop again. Hold on, uh, hold on. Uh, wait, what? Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's layers. Oh, there we go. I, I, I disabled and enabled the capture card a couple of times. We have no, and it's gone. It, yeah, because I moved the mouse pointer. So I wonder if, like, the, effectively <laughs> the 2D clock drivers hmm. are are what's actually flaky. And as soon yeah. as you obviously get the actual arc drivers in. Or, well, it's also a case of, obviously, the default VGA driver yeah. will have been built before this existed. Yeah. So obviously the default VGA driver is almost expected to have issues with this. Yeah. And I wouldn't expect that to get fixed until maybe possibly a new build of Windows yeah. 10 or 11. Either way, that's but just... certainly... That's incredibly bizarre behavior. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get the drivers installed. Obviously, we, we, we don't have drivers installed, so we're not judging it at the moment. We're more just going, yeah. that's really strange behavior. Yeah. yeah, and just trying to understand things about it. Yeah. Yeah, the safe mode of the video card is non-standard. That's a that's a good yeah. way of describing it. Oh yeah, in in kind of a way of you know motherboards that had dicky UEFI support would yeah. sometimes throw certain monitors for a loop. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like that yeah. for the very first gen ones. Hmm. Come on, seventy three percent. What windows are you using? We're on Windows ten. Uh, uh, are it we should on be twenty one H one. Yeah. Or well. Uh, 21 H2. Sorry, yeah. 21 H2. Yeah, we're on we're yeah. on Windows 10, 21 H2, and the monitor is just a bog standard Philips um, 1080p. Um, yeah, bog standard Philips 1080p. 24.3v7q. Yeah, it's it's not a gaming monitor or anything like. It's just a 24 inch 1080p IPS monitor. Yeah, that was like the cheapest IPS monitor you saw that day. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do I recommend upgrading to Windows 11? Depends um, what you're running currently. Yeah. If it's anything other than Windows 10, yes. If it's Windows 10, it's personal preference. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There seems to be no tech. There's no technical advantage of going to Windows 11 at this point, other than just getting the new theming of Windows 11. Um, also, some. Still, there's some scheduler tweaky stuff, mm. which, however, um, I yeah, uh, it, it 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 does bear mention that Windows 11 is the new flagship version of Windows. That's the one that's getting development. You know, um, so while Windows 10 is not out of support, they're not exactly trying to make, improve it, whereas they are actively trying to improve 11. So, yeah. There's a little bit of warmth in it. Yeah, I'm planning on upgrading my home PC to 11 um, Oh, I tomorrow. thought you'd done it. I was going to do it last week, but I got distracted by other stuff. Um, which Ooh, is... piece of candy. Ooh, piece yeah. of candy. Um, so, yeah, I didn't get around to it, but I, oh. I plan on doing it this weekend. Where is your FLIR? Um, yeah. Just because, again... Is there, there, I mean, you, you said there was some warmth in there at the moment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's like I can hold my finger on this all day. Yeah. But it was purely the case of, huh, I wonder what it looks like. That's a good question. Where is my flare? <laughs> is it not there? It's supposed to be over here. Oh, no. What the devil have I done with it? Where are you? It's either there or it's oh. on this bench. Oh, it's, it's there. Fine. Yeah, couldn't see the wood for the trees. <laughs> Hopefully it's charged the battery shot in that thing. But, uh, yeah. Hopefully that other company that was just like, oh, we've got a new thermal camera we'd like to send you. And I was just like, yes, please. Does that mean you're actually somewhat keeping up to date with people sending you 
little bit emails a little bit about stuff like it, that it takes me it takes me several working days to respond to them but i'm trying to keep an eye on it does i presume the camera doesn't support pass through for charging so you can't plug it in a USB into I the I think flip. you can. Uh, oh, oh really? wait, it doesn't charge the phone, but I think and you then can charge, charge the phone. No. Yeah. Okay. I think you can charge the camera while it's in use, though. Yeah. Um, I didn't particularly expect anything groundbreaking on there, but just yeah. Uh, huh. Interesting. Uh, is there anything interesting to view there? Not particularly. It's... Although it's interesting to see that spot there. Yeah, that's probably a reflection ah. from some. Oh. Oh, that, that's that the was, SSD. That was a, no, there was a fan, and oh. I just touched the fan, and it surprised oh, okay. me because something tickled my finger. <laughs> but no, that, that's what I meant. It surprised me that there was any warmth in the SSD because it's not recognized. Oh, right. I so see. I, it's I, powered on, though. Yeah, yeah. I just expected it to be functionally dead yeah. from a power point of view. Yeah. Um, yeah, thermals-wise, there's not a lot to see here. There is, um, I mean, um, the whole card has got warmth in it. Um, and The heat sink is hot. Yes, the heat sink is warm, and uh, it's mostly warm around the metal parts of it, with the plastic parts being cool because they're plastic. Um, so, yeah, nothing really of note there at this point. Um, if we see anything particularly interesting, then we'll show you. But certainly at this point, there's not much going on there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how are we doing on these? Uh, we, yeah, we're still we're stuck in Windows Update Screw hell it. at the moment. Yeah. Has it... Yeah. It detected an Intel driver. I am installing the Intel driver that came through Windows Update. Right. And seeing what that does. Yeah. If that doesn't do it, I'm just going to go to the Arc website and yeah. manually install the driver. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, right. I shall go through the chat while we wait for this to sort itself out. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Tech Gamer asks, anyone know why my non-overclocked 10700K runs at nearly 100C under Prime95 and a H100 I, uh, AIO? Um, that sounds like you've got a bad mount there um, to me. I would, I would remount um, your cooler and also keep in mind that Corsair, or Corsair AIOs, I love Corsair AIOs, but they do have faulty ones now and then where there is flow flow problems, either due to a bad pump or whatever other reason. And that will present itself as just the cooler seeming to not do its job. Also, which motherboard do you have? Because mm. most motherboards, if they are... Would it be Z690? I, can't, I forgot which generation yeah. you said. 10. Uh, oh, 10, Z490, most mm. like of the Z490 boards, will have multi-core enhancement or something like that enabled, which means that the power limits are unlimited. So even though you have not manually overclocked it, mm. all the power limits will be jacked to 11. Um, the thermal limits will be jacked to 11. Yeah. And, stuff, and the multiplier will be unlocked to run as high as it wants to and stuff like that. Oh, was that as much as the on the tenth gen as well? I thought that yeah. was only on the latest ones where it no. would just be. No, well, that's that's been yeah. a thing since the what the eighth gen, mm. sixth gen, something like that, where where it exists. But it's a case of obviously it got much worse on the ninth and tenth gen. Yeah, just because the high end parts gained some more cores. Mm. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, so yeah. Um, Jim KG3N said uh, um, MS have cocked up Windows 11 from the beginning. They, they keep trying to uncock it. Uh, I agree to an extent. There were certain ways in which they haven't done a very good job with Windows 11. But bearing in mind, Windows 10 was basically released unfinished. Um, you know, like when they released Windows 10, um, I, I'd been using the beta version and like settings was just not finished. And then they released it and I'm just like, oh, there's a new version. Here's the release version. I, it, it looks the same as the one that I've been using that's not done. Yeah. They're just f massive chunks of the settings app that are just not finished. Windows 10 didn't look done for at least a year after release to me. Yeah. It absolutely. works, but I wouldn't call it finished. So, yeah, this is, um, this is not the fault of Windows 11 per se, but just Microsoft doing Microsoft things, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Uh, let's see. No, there's definitely no optional mm. updates or anything coming on there. 
Uh, Ewan Lewis says rebar. Um, rebar is whatever the default is on this motherboard, which we suspect is currently off. So we are expecting the first experience to be bad, and then we're going to turn on rebar and be like, and that's why you need rebar, everyone. So yeah, we're aware of the rebar situation. Because we're doing an out-of-box experience, we want to see what happens if you try and run it up with no rebar, basically. Will it throw a hissy fit? Will it just perform badly? Will it throw up a message saying, rebar is not on, you should turn that on? We don't know. We're going to find out, basically. However, we are not going to judge it without rebar, because that's oh, not fair. There was a new driver that came out four days ago, apparently. Ah, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Very new driver, then. Uh, oh my god, the driver download is 1.3 gigs. 1.3 gigs? Bloody hell. Well, better get that downloading. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to work out what the difference is between the two available downloads. Oh, okay. So, right, GFX Win 101 3490. GFX Win 101 3490. The recommended families are the same, but the SHA-1 hashes are different. Yeah. <laughs> Intel, please. Hang on a sec. Let me see if the captures come back to life. Uh... Is the capture going to work? Uh, get rid of that. There we go. Yeah, hang on a sec. Let me get rid of the face cam a minute. Here's the driver's page. Spot the difference. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can, you can obviously just insert it on the laptop if you want to. Uh, I could, but I, uh, yeah, just get, get one downloaded. Why is one recommended and one not, but they seem to be exactly the same thing? Hmm. Intel? Yeah, like, we're, we're going to give this card its best, don't get me wrong. We are going to try and let this card do as well as it can. However, stuff like this, this is how it starts, man. Two, really two drivers that are labeled identically, different hashes, one of them is recommended, the other one isn't. Well, what's the other one then? Yeah. Fine. Get a front row pass to gaming deals, contests, betas, and more with Intel Software Gaming Access. That sounds dangerously like uh, a GeForce experience to me. Register for VIP access. With my limited edition graphics card that's not limited edition. Absolutely. I mean, it is my second special edition graphics card. <laughs> Who is the CEO of Intel at the moment? Bob Gelsinger. Who is Bob Gelsinger? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hmm. Take your system lighting to the next level with Intel Arc RGB controller. Intel Arc RGB controller uh, was custom designed to allow units to hunt. Users to harness 90 individually addressable LEDs on Intel Arc A770 graphics limited edition cards. Mm -hmm. Intel Arc RGB controller is available for download here. Uh, what do we do with our old phones? Uh, I tend to keep my old phones as spares. Then they eventually they get e-wasted when they're like completely obsolete. Having a spare phone is incredibly useful. Uh, oh, apparently one of them was a zip and the other was an EXE. For the drivers. Okay. So, um, so yeah. But why? That, yeah, that was not particularly well labeled, but I think it depends on how you're, um, uh, how you're uh, not distributing, how you're deploying it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, depending on, how, on your deployment, a zip might be easier. So yeah, because presumably, like with the zip, you can probably do a drivers only install without the software and stuff like that. So that that makes sense. Yeah. Doo -doo. Right. How long have we got on the driver download? Oh, that's at like uh... ten. Okay. A couple of seconds. Yep. Seven. Very well. What do I think of IQ? I like IQ. Um, which is an unpopular opinion, but on the flip side, most people who say they don't like IQ, I don't think have actually used much RGB software. 
because if you've used as if you've used various RGB softwares, you'll find that IQ is actually rather good. <laughs> oh my god. Hot mm. plug-in peripherals such as cameras, microphones, or displays, whilst art control in is open, may cause art control to become unresponsive. What? Like if if hot swapping during installation or something like that, yeah, sure, that's gonna confuse it, but just hot swapping stuff while mm, okay. Fine. Uh, right. Huh. Interesting. This software uses libraries from the FFmpeg project under the LGPL v2.1. Fair enough. This installer will install the graphics driver, the driver support assistant, and art control. Uh, why does it need driver support assistant? I presume that's the driver updater thing. Yeah. Uh, fine. Some arc control telemetry metrics may not align with third-party applications or built-in OS functions. Okay, so I think that's basically saying we, we are collecting telemetry from our drivers even if you have Windows telemetry turned off. I, that's what maybe, I'm reading there. Or it's saying that like fan speed, temperature, etc. reported by third-party programs may be incorrect. Oh, the screen's oh, okay. flashing. You might have capture now. Uh, let's see how we're doing with the capture. Face cam with capture. Reinitialize the capture card. Nope. <laughs> well, we, we've got no display at all at the moment. Yeah. Oh, it's back. Okay. Oh, we've got resolution. Oh, we've got capture. Nope. Um, and it's gone. <laughs> we, I, by the end of this stream, we're going to have to point a camera at a monitor, aren't we? Maybe. I tell you what, I'm actually that's not a bad What's idea. What's the other capture cards we've got? Uh, we have we've various. Got, uh, yeah, we've we got can... uh, Camlink. Yeah, we've got a cam... yeah. The Camlink will be my next choice. Um, and then for we've ease. got the um, um, Live Gamer. Yeah, we've got the Live Gamer. And Mini. we've got the um, USB generic yeah, Chinese got thing. Cheap Chinese one. The cheap Chinese one might be our best bet because it doesn't give a crap about anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Let's go to uh, bench cam with face. I now have resolution of 1080p. Excellent. Intel Arc Control. Yes. All right, now you can see us doing stuff and things. Game on, drivers. All right, have we got capture yet? I'm going to try for capture again. Um, capture with face cam. Oh. No. All right, back to bench cam with face. Right. Uh, there. Okay. We've lost. Have we still got resolution? Oh, oh it, it changed the DPI. Okay, fine. Right. The the actual um the actual. <laughs> Excuse me. What? It looks like you don't have any games. Wow, sad, unhappy face. And also, like, your games, I'm so lonely, it's so cold. <sighs> Someone thought that was really, really funny. Or cute. Yeah, and, like, please don't... The, uh, my reaction to that is the same as when, um, when you install Windows and Cortana says, we'll have you looking at cat pictures in no time. Like, you, Cortana, I'm a professional doing professional things. Yes, I also look at cat pictures. However, don't patronise me. <laughs> don't patronise. Yes, I also look at cat pictures. Yes. So that's the thing with this. It's just like don't patronise me. Just do your job. You know what I what I'm doing with this is not relevant to you. You know. Hmm. What? Also, just yeah, I don't know. It only reports the fan speed of this fan. Ah. Because I tapped both of them and the speed didn't change until the other one. Hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> VRAM um, effective fe <clears throat> frequency. Okay. Fine. Very well. We have stuff and things being All reported. Right. So we, we have drivers now, yes? Yes. Okay, right. I'm going to try and get some working capture huh. going now. I will reboot. Okay, yeah. We'll restart oh. and we'll see if the capture... Oh, I don't like this at all. What? So you see this... Oh yeah, that's not a this window. This is an overlay. Yeah. This is effectively an overlay. Yeah. But it is a window because there is a cross to close it here. But there's a cross there. Yeah. 
But that cross there removes this. Yeah. It doesn't close the... I, I had heard of this. The the wow. the, arc, the arc control interface is like the Steam overlay. It looks like a window, but it's not. It's a, it's a curtain on top of everything else. So if you want to have two things open side by side, you are crap out of luck. Yeah, and you can't move it around either. It's stuck aligned to the top left mm. of your screen. Yeah. Uh, fine. Okay. Anyway, so. Um, uh, can we use MSI Afterburner for this Intel? Probably. Uh, so, yes. Um, uh, anyway, right, okay, so we're, we'll reboot. We'll see if the capture works. If not, I'm going to try chopping out some of our other capture cards, see if we can get working capture, because that's going to be a bit awkward if we don't have working capture from this. Mm. And it blows my mind. I don't understand how we can have a picture on a monitor, but the capture card can't pick it up. Mm. Like, that's very strange to me. Um, however, based on the fact that we know these are weird. Mm. Okay, right, we're booted up. See, let's see if the capture is okay. So I'm going to go to face cam with capture, and I'm going to reinitialize the capture card. Give it another one. Uh, move the mouse. And it's gone. That's amazing. OK, so that's not a driver issue. That's actually broken. I'm going to grab a different capture card. So let's come off of that for a sec. Uh, let's start with the, let's start with the, um, the Elgato. Yeah, absolutely. What's right. this thing called again? Camlink. OK, yeah. right. And Two seconds. Yeah. Uh, face camera capture, deactivate, activate. Okay, so it can see heaven. Okay, now watch me move the mouse. And it's gone. Yeah. As soon as you move the mouse, the capture dies. How, how does that make any sense at all? That's bizarre. Yeah, okay. Right, I'm plugging capture cards in, so there might be some jitter. Uh, oh, balls, the, the cam link doesn't have pass-through. Yeah, absolutely. But no, that's fine. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Well, we'll just see if it works first, won't we? Yeah. Okay, right, I'm going to unplug the thing. Oh! <clears throat> okay, we've got a light on the cam link. Cool. Uh, so, uh, video capture device. Yeah. Uh, yeah, call it Cam Link or oh, something. Link. Uh, ah, Cam Link 4K. There we go. Device defaults. Yes. What? What is that saying? Please start. Your own webcam. Uh, that's. Try changing it to something else and then back to Cam Link. That's better. Yeah, right. And then. And then OK it. Yeah, that's not detecting anything. Oops. <laughs> right. Where yeah. is. Why is there not just a bright because, window? Because it doesn't know the dimensions of it because it's not getting a ah, signal yet. Also, I think I broke the live gamer. Uh, that's fine. We'll straighten that out in a sec. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're actually frozen. Yeah. Um, yeah, deactivate and reactivate the live gamer. Uh. There we go. There we go. Cool. Okay, right. We've got our capture back. All right. So, okay. It looks like... Uh, so, go back to wherever you had the thing. There you go. Yeah. Um, hang on a sec. Let me have a quick look just to let me yeah. wrangle it a second, just see if I can get a signal out of it. Because sometimes... When you're having difficulty with a capture, sometimes if you tell the capture card exactly what signal it should expect, yeah. then it will find that. It's yeah. just having difficulty detecting it. So if I, I'm going to set a custom resolution and say, you should be receiving a 1920 by 1080 signal. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to run that at 60 FPS. So, OK. Make visible. Uh, Deactivate, activate. 
No, that's just not getting a signal at all. That's seeing nothing. Cool, okay, right, let's find something else then. Um, <clears throat> right, where is, let's try the cheap Chinese. Ugh. Doo -doo, doo -doo. I haven't used this guy in a while. No, absolutely. What's it come up as? Um, unknown. Oh, balls. Hang on a sec. I need to. Uh, oh, I'll use. I'll reuse this extension. I couldn't fit it into any USB ports. Uh, I don't know. It'll probably come up as something really generic, like video capture or something. You might have. You'll probably have to close this window. Uh, that one? Yeah, that'll be it. Oh no, that's the multimeter cam. Uh, USB video. USB video. Activate. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. That's found something. Okay. All right. So make that visible. Oops. There we go. There we go. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, moving the mouse. It has uh -huh. not disappeared. Okay. Right. We might be getting somewhere now. Interesting. Okay. Right. Okay. If we swap places, I'll quickly. Uh, oh, hold on a sec. Um, what we'll do is we'll. Um, you'll have to work. Whoops. You'll have to work side screen, but. Can't uh, you project it to that monitor? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, that's how we'll do it. All right. So. Okay, right, let's put that down there. At 600 pixels. It has to be exact, otherwise it'll annoy me. Oh, fine, it's doing that now. Okay, right. Okay. Right. Um, right, so what have we got at the moment? Duplication, right, so we'll change that to extended and then I'll get you a projector. So stand yeah. by. Extend. Then you'll have to drop the RDP and reconnect. Okay, yeah. Right, let's close that for a moment. Your session will be disconnected, yes. Connect. Oh, interesting, it didn't... Ah, uh, no, it Expand. does not detect that I okay, have two Okay, you'll have displays. to change the option when you connect. Uh, if you close it... Yeah, all right, stand by. And then open... Uh, show options. options, and then display the second tab, and then use all of my monitors. Use all of my monitors. Connect. Okay. Oh. Oh, it didn't like that. Nope. Okay. Uh, okay, we yeah, we'll, we'll have to improvise then, yeah. Oh well, whatever. Fine. Uh, um, duplicate, that's fine. Yeah. Slightly irksome. I wonder, might be able, yeah, should have tried the Live Gamer Mini first just because that has passed through. Um, so, well, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, I suggest we swap Capture yeah. Card now because we've now proven that Capture is possible. seemingly possible and seemingly. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, at least. Yeah, because we we stable. Yeah, we are. Well, yeah, we're we're doing science with this card. That was the point, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah, okay. Coin. Where's the cross? There's yeah. The cross. I'm so pleased it changes color when you hover over it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, fine. Um, okay, cool. Uh, various people are requesting some benchmarks. Um, we'll. Get to those. We'll get to that. We're currently yeah. we're currently experimenting with capture cards, just yeah. kind of seeing what wrangling. That's right. We're we're trying to we're fig we're trying to figure out a test bench setup that um, works at the moment. However, ooh. yeah, keep um yeah we'll we'll get to doing some benchmarks as soon as we can, and then yeah we'll be interested in taking some suggestions. We're not going to do benchmarks that other people have already done because other people have already done them. Yeah. However, um, like for example, um, ooh. uh. uh MIJC, sorry, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, um, is asking for some compute benchmarks and stuff like that. We could certainly... Oh, I'll grab folding at home and just see if that... 
works. Yeah. So we, that'll we, be an interesting yeah, we could certainly check. throw a couple of compute things at it and see how it responds to that because apparently it should be, it should punch well above its weight in compute. In theory, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, if yeah. people can suggest compute stuff that we can just grab a download for, yeah, that would be great. The other thing I'm going to double check is um, what GPU Pi does, and just see whether that instantly falls over or anything like that. Um, have you got a way of adapting DisplayPort to HDMI? No, I don't. Um, I I had an adapter, but I sold it during the week, and I haven't bought another one in yet. So, um, uh, no, I cannot. Do you have a DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable? Yes. Can I have that so I can plug this monitor into DisplayPort on the GPU? Yes. Cool. Because I want to see what that does as well. If yes. we have HDMI capture and DisplayPort to monitor and just see if that causes some different behavior. That would be very Just because we're finding out what happens. Yeah. That might be a very viable capture method if you know for someone who's trying to do stuff because like we, um, I'm blessed by having like four different capture cards kicking yeah. around in this room or that are all very different. However, if you don't happen to have a handful of capture cards, what else can you do? So yeah, that's interesting. Um, cool. All right. Um, right. I need. Uh, I need a not terrible micro USB. <laughs> uh, what's that? That's type C. I don't know where my nice micro USB is right now. Uh, what have I got that uses micro? That's actually a good question. Uh, I've just uh, I've just suddenly become stuck on that. I'm sure I, I had a nice braided one at some point, but it's gone walkabout. Oh, it's at home. That's where it is. Balls. Okay. Uh, oh, that's awkward. Um, have you got a hard drive that uses micro? They've all got the type uh, the USB three connector on. Oh, I might have a couple of customer ones actually, which I can borrow. Uh, where did I put? I put it over here. Yes. Yep. Good shout. Yeah. Good shout. I'm going to swap to full screen capture. Yep. Oh, no, that's awkward. None of them have one. And then I'm going to add no. a video capture device, add existing. Oh, you can't double click on it. Interesting. OK. And oh. then I'm going to go uh, Live Gamer. Oh, no. I don't have any USB 2 hard drives in at the moment. Live Gamer to the top. There we go. That just makes it slightly easier for me to see what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't have any USB 2 hard drives in stock right now. There's usually one kicking around at any given time. Where did Benchmate go? Oh. Uh, however, what have I got in here? Oh, sorry, bear with us, people. This was this is an un I, I wasn't expecting to have capture issues. In retrospect, I should have foreseen this. Oh boy. Because I'd heard of the monitor issues, and so I should huh. have known that we might have capture issues. Benchmate keeps closing. Oh. This capture is truly horrendous. Yeah, that's why I don't use that one. No. Um, there you go, right. I'm now in the storeroom, everyone. And I'm looking for a box that'll have miscellaneous okay. wires in it. How do I not have a, a, just a USB micro cable that supports data. How how is this possible? Ah. <coughs> CompuBench Desktop OpenCL. I found one. Interesting. Ah. Now I just have to pray that this isn't uh, charge only. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do -do 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 okay, I'm going to pull out the cable on the capture. Okay. And now I need to remember, oh no, where did I put down the other capture card? Oh no, it's a clown fiesta. It's there, it's fine. Ah, oh, there you go. Cool, okay. It's when tech stuff like this that comes up, suddenly my mental workload goes through the roof. And I'm like, oh god. Right, HDMI in. OK. 
connect. Oh, interest. Point of interest, I've just realized the, um, the cam link wasn't plugged into a USB 3 port. Oh, okay, interesting. We'll retry that in a second. Yeah. Just see what that does. Yeah. All right, we do have pass through on this, so. Um, I'll grab that out of the back of the laptop. Yeah, because obviously pass through okay. makes our life significantly easier. Yeah. Right. All right. And it's worked out that there is pass through, but there's no video on the pass through. Oh, there you go. All right, good. So we have pass through again. Cider makes problems easier to solve. Big mood. I'm go. going to be reaching for that in a moment. Right, where are we at the moment? Live gamer. Oh, we've got some capture going. Yeah. Have you preemptively. Live gamer HD2. Oh, that's the face cam. That's why. Okay, the cam link. Is that live? Uh, hit start. No, it's not live. Good. Okay. Yeah, that was the old one. Right, let's see. Uh, live gamer HD2. Uh, live gamer mini. No! <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't use the Live Gamer Mini. HDCP! Oh, this is why the Live Gamer Mini is bad. It's got the worst HDCP support ever. Well, interesting. Also interesting that mm. apparently the Arc A770 doesn't have double precision support for GPU Pi. Hmm. Which is interesting. Fair right, okay. Uh, Give we'll... me two seconds. I'm just going to see if there's a setting in here for like H H D H D oh. HDCP. Yes, that yeah. one. Uh, fair enough. I'm Otherwise, just... I'm going to try the cam link again, and this time make sure it's on a USB 3 port, just in case that was a uh, unfair test. Where did I? Over there. Oh, what is this? This is silly, but also, no, it doesn't appear Yeah, I, I'd be impressed if they'd allow you to turn it off. Very well. Okay, we're swapping out again. Change places! <clears throat> okay. Uh, unplug that. I've got a grown collection of capture cards in the middle of the floor between <laughs> the two benches. <laughs> All right, cam link is plugged back in. This time it's on a USB 3 port. Okay. So. Uh, if I go onto that one. Oh, ah. There is cam link. Cam link 4K. And just try deactivate and reactivate. Yeah. Nope. No, the cam link still gives nothing. This is one of the things I don't like about the cam link is when it's got nothing, you get nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. Whereas most of the other cards will give you a black screen or a no signal or something. Yeah. And th this is specifically why the cam link was no good for a diagnostic capture card. Oh, but, yeah, absolutely. Although obviously that's not what it's designed for, but ju yeah. just as an interest point to people who are interested in capture cards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, that's no bueno. Uh, right, I've got one more shot for something that will help us out, and that is... The Chinese capture card with pass-through. Oh yeah, that USB one. I bought two of them. So yes, this one is equally as bad, if not worse, than the other one. However... But you bought two of those? Sorry, I bought two cheap Chinese ones. Ah, yeah, one yeah, with yeah. pass-through and one yeah, without. Yeah. So yeah. And this one has a USB-A dev uh, device port, which lets you know that it's cheap Chinese tat. <laughs> All right, unplug that. I'll plug it into a USB 3 port, although I seem to remember that I actually disassembled... The USB 3 port, the traces aren't connected. Yes, I was going to say, yeah. I seem to remember that when I, uh, when I reviewed this, we found that the USB 3 pins aren't actually connected in the yeah. card. So when it says it's USB 3, what it actually means is it's not. You cannot plug that USB. I, I nearly did, I nearly <laughs> did. Right, HDMI inputs and... 
Oh, let's get the output connected. This is probably a Pira's video as USB well. USB 3 HD video camera. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely what this is. It does not appear to work. No? No. Oh. Has it, has it appeared to, you know, do something? I mean, it's got a light on it. It's got a light on it. Um... No, there appears to be nothing. All right. Uh... Yeah, nothing. I'm just going to swap to something else yeah. and then swap back to it. No, nothing. Okay. There's one more that we can try. Um, I'll plug it into the Live Gamer HD, which is our face cam. Oh, that's going to give. That's probably going to give a HDCP error as well, because it's also an Ava Media card. Possibly. Um, however, we'll try that just for science, because we, we've come this far. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if this doesn't work, then we'll have to use the Chinese capture card and figure out a um, uh, a way to get you a preview. Uh, or we can do the um, the DisplayPort uh, test. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. This is slightly annoying because this is more interesting for capture and not very interesting about the card itself. But yeah. we've come this far, so yeah, absolutely. I've just swapped to the bench cam okay. with the face cam because obviously that gives a yeah. scene that has a video, so we're not dead. Yes. All right. So I shall unplug that. Yep, that has gone to a no signal. And plug in in. That's the Intel card plugged in. It still says no signal. And now it's got uh, the Arc desktop. Oh, so we have we have a picture. Yeah. Uh, oh no, copy protected content. Yeah. Okay. Uh, heckin' yeah. Uh, this is the I love Ava Media products except for this issue. Yeah which they just don't seem to handle HDCP, and I don't understand why. Probably because it costs money. Yeah, that must be it. Yeah. Uh, okay, right, let's unplug that and revert. So, Absolutely. Okay, so in that case, we're going to the Chinese capture card. There you go. Right, I'm just swapping back to the face cam. Hello! Uh, Chinese capture card, and then we'll try and plug in a... Why don't you just use the other one? The one that has pass through. That one didn't work though, did it? I thought it. I thought it did. You were telling me it didn't work. No, we said the cam link didn't work. The the not the Chinese one, the Ava Media one. Oh, the Ava Media. Oh, that was the Ava Media one. That worked. was that was HTCP error. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, on the actual capture. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, the the cheap Chinese capture card is the only one that has actually given us working capture so far. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That is the cam link, isn't yeah. it? Oh, no. no. However, this does not have pass-through, which means we can't see yeah, what yeah. we're doing. That's fine, which is so why we're the... going to try and stick yeah, a so that's the only... on it. Yeah, that's the problem we've got to solve now. Uh, okay, Let's see what right. that does. Whew. Okay. Interesting, though. Why can't I hold all these capture cards? <laughs> I shall now grab a DisplayPort cable. There we go. All right. Cool. I'm going to unplug you. Hang on. Pop that out of there. Display ports. Excellent. Display port. <sighs> okay, right. Capture, USB video. I have unplugged the HDMI from the graphics card. Ah, okay. I now have display port. I now have display. So now I'm going to plug in the HDMI. Yep, HDMI for capture, and then we duplicate to that. Well. First of all, I see what the computer does. Yeah. Flashes the desktop. Fine. All right. We looks like we have extended desktop at the moment. Try and move it off right. 
Oh, uh, yeah, oh, what's that I'm orientation? Gonna... Fine. Swap that. And there you go. Duplicate. Keep. Yep, and we now have capture. All right, there, there we go. go. That was a that was a horrifying method to achieve that, but we now have capture. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to do one more quick tweak now. Um, so I'm going to ditch that. I'm just going to change the XR1 source to that so we can use all of our existing things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so USB video. Deactivate, reactivate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing we never looked at is to see whether there was a firmware update for the XR1. So you meant to look at that ages ago, didn't we? Oh, yeah. We'll have to make Just a note to, to that check that at some point. All yeah. right. There we go. I'm cracking open a room temperature one with the boy. Can I interest you in an Aspel cider in a fancy bottle? Um, sure. I will give it a go. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the rock one today because I haven't I haven't, I haven't used this one much. Decisively. <laughs> Very good. Yes. What's your choice today? The golden hammer of Thog. <laughs> Very good. All right, so. An hour and a half into the stream, and we've got the graphics drivers installed with Capture. Yeah, so interesting. I wonder if it is an HDCP issue that's causing an issue on the XL1, and it's just doing a really weird way of handling it. I don't think so. The XL1 hasn't given me HDCP problems before. That's a drier cider, but I like that. Oh, it's actually marked as extra dry, but it doesn't have that... Like, you can taste that that is a dry cider, not a sweet cider, but it doesn't have that full of sand taste that farmer's dry cider has. Yeah, true. Hmm. I find that quite drinkable anyway. It, that makes a change, after because we've been drinking sweet ciders lately. Yes. That makes a nice change. Good. Bottles are getting bigger. It's a 500ml bottle. It's just got a very long neck on it, this. So you have to find yourself... Do you hold it at the bottom and have the tall neck that you've got to aim? Or do you hold it by the neck like a pirate and go, Arr! Specifically with the sound effects. Hmm. Well, that one thing Copy that... Copy bench could harm your... Okay. <laughs> yeah. It blew my mind recently when I considered the fact that the pirate accent and the farmer accent are identical. Yes. Do you yeah. know why? Why? Did, did the pirates originate from, Dors from, from the West Country or something? Oh, I've forgotten their name. I've forgotten their name. Very early films, black and white films, yeah. there was an actor who was effectively the pirate actor who got cast as that, oh. who was an American, yeah. and they went, oh, well, that Somerset accent is clearly what pirates would have spoken like. Ah. Thus it is the pirate accent. Oh, interesting. Very well. Guybrush Threepwood approves. Use I just, a straw. <laughs> I don't know if the weird mousing issues are mm. this trackpad being awful, or whether I'm getting weird mousing issues. Uh, don't... Uh, oh yeah, no, you're, you're seeing a clean output. Yeah, I was going to say you might have input lag because of capture, but no, you're not actually looking yeah, for capture. It's, also, it, it's just the fact of like, it just doesn't move sometimes. It's a crap trackpad. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I don't know if it's this. Yeah. Do you want a real mouse? That's oh very God. easy to achieve. I'm it would, it would, yes. This will now synchronize. Yeah, if you can find a home for that and... I will remove items from the bench. Yeah. Oh no, my thermal pads. Um, <clears throat> tell you what, I'll, I'll migrate this to the other bench. Oh, <laughs> keyboard. Very well. All right. The whole bench can shuffle over if that helps you. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, you can do now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Squeak. Hmm. All right. All right, 90 minutes into the stream, and we're going to start running tests. So what, what have you got there? What's CompuBench? A bench that someone in chat said. A very well. So I am just going to click the select. I'm going to do start all, and I'm going to look at things. That's a brain. Yes. I've got a friend who would like that a lot. Okay. They, they find um, um, that uh, they approve of um, um, brains. No. 3D models, rotating things, scans, biomedical imagery. Let's go with that because that's the closest. <laughs> what? I've forgotten the word. No, I can't. No, moving on. That's water. All right. Mm. Is rebar still off? Uh, we're, I assume so, yeah. We, well, we haven't checked, have we? It's yeah. in whatever state the ball defaults yeah, fine. to. Okay. We should probably, given that we need to pick up the pace, oh, we'll, yeah, let, we'll let this run through, then we'll move straight to switching on rebar and run it again, shall we? Yeah, well, yeah. I just wanted a thing that yeah. worked. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, we, we at the moment, it's taken us a lot longer than we anticipated to get to a working system. That's not the card's fault. We did not expect to have capture problems. Which so. is arguably the card's fault because we haven't had capture problems this is on true. AMD yeah. or yeah. NVIDIA. Yeah, we, I mean, we've had capture pro We've had HDCP issues from AMD, but again, that's because Ava Media, not you know any of the other capture cards, would have worked straight away. Yeah, which is why we have a selection of capture cards. So if one of them doesn't work, you just chop out to another one. Yeah, but we, I, I literally, we literally had to go through every capture card we have to find one. Out of what's that? Five? One, two, three, four. F yeah, five capture cards we just mm. went through, didn't we? Yeah, two Ava Medias, two Chinese, um, and the um, uh, and the Elgato. So yeah. Ah, oh, gummy bears. Yeah. So we we just had to go Which through. Is slowly becoming noisier. Yeah. So yeah, out of five capture cards, only one of them actually gives us something that works. Yeah. And two of them are cheap Chinese things that don't particularly care. Yeah. So, hmm. And a partridge or doing a poetry. <laughs> uh, Robert Newtown from Dorset is to blame for the pirate accent in Treasure Island. There we go. See, someone knew where I was forgetting parts of the things. Yeah. yeah. I am very pleased that someone knew where I was. Oh, we just... Oh yeah, no, we're fine. Um, what are these tests running? This is CompuBench, so it's doing computational um, uh, tests. So yes. a lot of this looks dangerously like um, like s that one there said subsurface scattering. This is like ray tracing simulation, that kind of thing. Um, so like it might be three D modeling stuff. Yeah, think Blender, that kind of thing. We're in we're in that kind of area here. Because the interesting thing is, theoretically, this card should punch well above its weight for that. What are you looking for? Um, I highlighted the message. There we oh, go. I see. Yep. Yeah. Um, it was... Oh, yeah. CompuBench Desktop OpenCL. Yeah. And just a case of, yeah, that was the person who suggested it. And, uh, yeah, it was Martin Barker who suggested we run this. We are going to run other tests as well. I just um, hope that, yes. Yeah. However, yeah, we just kicked off with this because at the moment we've had a lot of trouble getting capture working. So, yeah. However, now we're actually running tests. So There you go. Interesting. There's a lot of fails there. We have some fails. Hmm. Okay. So, have we got a couple that have given us, have spat out a number? Interesting. Compare. There you go. All right. Success! They don't Our device is faster than a 1080. Fine. Yeah. Okay. They don't have some recent information there, do they? Uh, fine. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, we need a couple of scores that we can screen cap. Then, um, uh, should we give it, uh, should we give um, uh, Heaven a quick blast as well? 
Uh, uh, should we should we do a heaven run and a uh, or should we do a um, superposition run? Well, I I, I kind of want to get one more run in with rebar off before we turn that on, just so we can just again just demonstrate to the masses why rebar is critical for this because we know it's going to be. Oh my god! <laughs> Look out, ten eighty, your days are numbered. There you go, thirty eighty ti. Level set segmentation. Oh, a 3082. Interesting. Hang on a sec. Isn't, isn't that in this? That's the same order of magnitude at the very least. 21, 21, 483, 23, 592. Yeah, so actually it's, it's, in, it's in the same, it's on the same graph as a 3080 Ti. Yeah. So, and considering the price gap between those, the, the, these two cards, that is saying something. Mm. And what will be really interesting to see if that score goes up when we switch on rebar or not. Yeah. And so then on the... that's actually a very, very interesting result. Oh, interesting. On the 256, it's massively lower. 256 what? <laughs> yeah. Level set simulation okay, 256 yeah. as opposed to 128. Yeah. Given that's probably a bigger data set or something like that, that might be where we're seeing the rebar issue come in. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. If you want to screen grab those settings, we'll throw a gaming benchmark at it as just one more quick dry run. Interesting. Mm. Apparently, the local tone mapping 2K is a failure or not supported on the 3080 Ti, but it works here. Oh, okay. Or hmm. doesn't work here? No, doesn't work here. What? Yeah. Ocean surface scattering. 82362428. So the 3080s double that number? Yeah. All right. And then on the Cat Mole Clark subdivision, level three, it's 175 to 366. Fine. Interesting. Yeah. So depending on what you're doing, yeah. It's interesting, it's similar, and then very much not. Yeah. So right, right. let's go for a 3060. Uh, yeah, okay. I was going to say, just... we should screen cap this and get it doing something else while we talk about the numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then you see kind of like ocean surface simulation based off of the, their website results yeah. are roughly in the same order as this card is for that. So that matches with the gaming performance of okay. this card being similar to a 3060. Yes. But then in some other tests, it was similar to a 3080. Yeah. Or 3080 so Ti. So potentially a very situation. But again, yeah. rebar, re rebar is probably off at the moment. So our numbers are probably invalid right now, which is... Oh, interesting. It does seem to save them. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, if we've got saved, then that's fine. I will also... Capture the window. Hmm. Um, Will it run Time Spy? It would. We don't have Time Spy downloaded anywhere. Save to the desktop. Um, so yeah, I should. We should have gone. Time Spy takes ages, though. Um, uh, oh, okay. I was going to suggest that we uh, uh, do a reboot without rebar. Let's just quickly throw either Superposition or um, Heaven at it. Um, without rebar, just so yeah. we've got a, a, a gaming benchmark with no rebar. Yeah. Chris, if you're here, put right. your heaven settings in chat again. Uh, well, we if just run a there. preset. It doesn't matter, does it? Well, but it just purely gives a secondary comparison to some other device as well. Mm, yeah. Interesting. There's no display output, display port output. It might have defaulted to... Um, yeah, it's defaulted to the HDMI. Yeah. Which is just interesting comment. Yeah. All right. Okay. API DX11, quality ultra. Right. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. Oh, yeah. Okay. DX11. Yep. DX11, quality ultra, rest disabled or off, full screen off, 1080p. Uh... 1080p. Yeah. Is that AA off as well? Uh, no AA, Chris. No anti-aliasing. Um, and yeah, we're expecting this to be bad because this card is not good at DX11. AA off, yes, confirm. Cool. cool. All right, let's run that. Then um, 
Yeah, let's let's throw a superposition at it as well because superposition is DX twelve, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Have you it got the installer? Be. Um, it should be on the toolkit. Are we not surely we've got superposition on this. Yeah, we'll find out in a sec. I'll go and grab a toolkit just in case. I'm going to check if it's actually on this flash drive. That is sensible. Cool. Oops, benchmark. Yeah, we got superposition on this. Cool. Okay. How much is the wattage usage under load? Oh, yeah, no idea at the moment. Um, once we've got the benchmark, uh, we'll see if hardware monitor can see wattage. In a way, it should do because the drivers should be reporting it, shouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll let this benchmark run clean because if we start tabbing out of stuff that messes the numbers, um, then we can just quickly put it into um, stress test mode and see what the um, see what that says. Any benchmark with RT on? Does this, does this even yeah. do ray tracing? I mean, yeah, we'd have we'd need uh, Port Royal for that, and um, that means downloading three D Mark, uh, which we don't have downloaded. Um, but again, other people have like Jay's Two Cents did a Port Royale test on this, I think. Um, so yeah, if you want, so's the Bauer. Yeah, so if you want to see Port Royale, then just go and look at their channels. We're trying to run tests that other people haven't run at the moment, or uh, we're we're trying to run tests that either a other people haven't run, or b we're trying to do we're trying to do just weird real world stuff that is relevant to our interests specifically as a channel which is why we spent a lot of time talking about capture because i'm interested in what capture is like as someone who does streaming um so yeah and also a case of if you see a computer with one of these in for repair yeah exactly that however if you want to know how fast this is then go to linus tech tips and look at their video basically or or, <laughs> or GN, gamers or... nexus or ltt uh, uh, Jay's two cents, or Der Bauer, or yeah, yeah. Uh, we are considering trying to make an actual review of this card. Um, we might do that as a test run because we need to practice doing a review. So we we may actually try and do a, a quote unquote proper review, um, but we're not sure yet. We're just thinking about it. Don't think Steam is installed. Uh, no, Steam won't no. take long to download if we need it though. Because um, yeah. I think <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to have time, but I really wanted to run up um, Deep Rock Galactic on this because Deep Rock Galactic can be run in DirectX at least nine. I think it can be done in eleven or twelve or Vulcan. Mm -hmm. um, I think, um, and so because we can run exactly the same game in multiple different renderers, that is really interesting to show the performance difference between those renderers on this card. So that, I think, would be a really, really interesting test. Mm. Because theoretically, it should drastically show the deficiency in DX11 performance. Or, yeah, better put, non-DX12. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like how we're using the royal we. Yes, I always use the royal we, uh, because sometimes I've got other people with me and sometimes I don't. Seems like it does work on Linux with some drivers. I have zero interest in the Linux performance of this, to be honest. Although that much being said, I doubt anyone else has done any stuff with Linux. The problem is, is I'm not qualified to. There's probably some people who are very interested to know those answers. I mean, um, the level of testing I would do is, does it display a picture? Yeah, I guess. Uh, if we actually do a real video, uh, like if we actually do a real review video of this, I might catch up with... Um, with Lead Farmer and uh, Paul Daniels and say, look, we're going to test this card in Linux. What things do you do? Like, what would you run in Linux to test this? Just so we can just see what that um, looks like. Bonus points if it's something that is runs in Windows as well, so we can compare the Linux performance directly to Windows performance. There you go. Cool. All right, so let's screen cap that. Um, let's do a quick, let's blast superposition on there. 
um, because that's DX12. Uh, and then we'll get on, we'll get rebar switched on, and then theoretically the card should actually be giving its maximum performance then. Right, give me two seconds, I'm just gonna load yeah. hardware. It's interesting to know that while um, like I have, I don't know if that number is high or not, but it wasn't stuttering or anything. So no, it was two hundred FPS. Yeah. So going, average. Yeah, going back to our original argument of what is the dumb user out of box experience like, um, a a uninformed user who doesn't know that they need rebar turned on might look at that and just assume that that is how fast this card is because it doesn't look broken, does it? No. Also, I just heard some coil wine, which is another point of interest. I'm going to listen out for that in a minute. Come on. Actually run. Interesting. Hardware and pros are no. Uh, Pharonix has a complete benchmark suite for Linux. Oh, yeah. Oh, Level point. 1 text did some Linux stuff, apparently. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I'd expect Wendell to yeah. do it. Uh, the GPU power is apparently 35 watts presently at desktop can i somehow no you can't tab oh, out wow, of it i can't alt. even can you not alt tab out of it oh it's horrendous what were you thinking intel i'd heard that this was bad but oh you can't even start menu yeah so do you just have to close arc control yeah Apparently. There we go. Oh, that's neat. The the metrics in the top right. That's actually quite nice. Apparently, around 200 watts is the answer. About 200 watts, yeah. Whilst it's doing this. Yeah. We don't know if it's running flat out, however, ballpark figures. Yeah. Again, the, the card may not be this full. And... Yeah, there was definitely a little bit of coil wine from it then, just as an interest note. Not the worst I've ever heard, but it's it has some coil wine. Please insert the drive. It has been inserted. Uh, let's see. Oh. Um, uh, new, oh new toolkit. Uh, down the bottom, superposition. Um, you might be better off dragging that to desktop before you install it. Installing off of flash drives is a terrible thing to do. I'm slowly trying to transition across to just, uh, okay, cancel that one and then run it off the desktop. Yeah. That's better. Do -do -do. VRAM being at 62C is very good. Yeah, although um, I don't think we're stressing the VRAM in a meaningful way yet, because um, like heaven isn't exactly a modern benchmark. Hmm. I really do have a radio voice, thanks. <laughs> Chris said mine with it. And then DP was like, Minecraft with it. Unfortunately, we, yeah, we don't have time to do lots of stuff at the moment. We've, well, now we're actually getting tests running. I think we're actually getting to the interesting bit. I'm just a bit stressed because it took us an hour and a half to actually start running stuff. Did not intend it to take that long, but nah. Right, uh, I'm going to quickly step out and take a comfort break while we install oh, well. Superposition. I'll be, I'll be. Yes, I trust this software. Keep. Cancel. Hold on. Report is safe. I think this is safe. B S D K S. Keep. Show more. Report this app is safe. Oh. Close. Keep. Keep anyway. Run anyway. Oh, I see it's not signed. Yes, that's because it's ancient. 
finish. Launch. Right. Oh yeah, there's a DirectX and an OpenGL version. Excellent. Uh, 1080p high. Run. We will see what this does. Mm. <clears throat> it's interesting um, if the GPU memory used is actually accurate, just because it, it is bouncing around a lot. So it'd be interesting to see if that's actual usage or whether that's just effectively allocation pressure. <clears throat> yeah, if that's actual usage, it will be, uh, yeah, just interesting, just because you don't get such reporting out of other GPUs. You generally get the kind of allocation. Does it slightly smell to you? Yeah. It's kind of that technology N smell. New electronics. Yeah. New electronics heating up for the first time. Yeah. It's all that glue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, interesting. You're pat running this on 1080p high, mm. or whatever it was, it's reporting 190 watts. Oh, that's interesting. It's lower then. <clears throat> yeah. Again, no rebar, so. As an FYI as well, um, if the capture looks like it stutters at any point, that's the capture card, because this capture card is bad. Yeah. Also, we would expect these results to be ever so slightly lower because it's duplicating the display, so it's effectively yes. sending it out onto it. Yeah. This, these are not scientific tests we're doing. We are doing generalized tests to get an idea of what stuff looks like. Yeah. Is there a new Unigen engine benchmark? Uh, not yet, I don't think. Yeah. But like superposition will still max anything you throw at it. So. Oh yeah, I was just wondering if, if they made something new. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think they do it with new versions of DirectX because like this is the DX12. Um, benchmark, um, and uh, yeah, I, I doubt that they will do anything until there is a DX13, is my guess. Mm. It's just because obviously it doesn't support ray tracing. Yeah. And ray tracing is a reasonably large feature of DX12. This is true, yeah. In fact, I think Port Royale is the only ray traced benchmark of any note that's not a that isn't a yeah. production suite one, like yeah. a ray traced gaming benchmark. Port Royale is your only option, I think. Unless you run a game benchmark, but that's arguably not a fair test. I mean, that makes sense because it, it's a guide, a at game. least. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that gives you actual performance in this that is actual true. Game. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the problem. There's two kinds of benchmarks. There is a objective, like number goes up benchmark, and then there is quote unquote real life benchmarks. Mm. And game benchmarks give you real life for that game, but yeah. There you go. All right, 15,270. We don't have any comparison numbers because we haven't prepared for this. However, there we go. All right, let's get rebar on and how do, do I all disable that again. focus mode? I've forgotten how you disable um, it. Being if you a click thing. Uh, bring up notifications. Let me just hit save on that yeah. as well. There you go. Then click expand in the bottom left of that. Yeah. And then bottom right off. There you go. Will that stop it turning itself on it will again? Now, it will now show all notifications. Yes, but will it stop it turning on again in the future? That will stay like that until it is changed, correct, yeah. Okay. All right. Did Caradog fix the eBay 3090? Um, well, yes and no. It um, wasn't broken. Yeah. But I made it worse. <laughs> yeah, made it fractionally worse. Yeah but not to the point which we've not done any more work on the 3090, but yeah. it it works. It's just not quite as... It was already more or less as good as it was going to get, and we were not able to reproduce those results. That's yeah. kind of the conclusion of that, wasn't it? Okay, right. All right. Are you... Ah, yes. Uh, so we're, we're now going to switch on rebar. 
Resize bar. Uh, resize bar. On. S sitting in BIOS is making it go nuts. Is is that on? I don't like how difficult that is to tell whether that's on or not. Mm. Good lord. Okay, they're calming down now. The fans are very, very pleasant. Rebar support is gone from disabled to auto. Oh, I hate it. Mm, I hate auto. Just tell me if it's on or off. But fine. I think I think auto means on if everything supports it, because obviously, if we put a if we put say a, a Ryzen two thousand CPU in this, that would not support rebar, correct? Right, but is the option toggled to the on position? That's the thing. You can't force it on if the hardware doesn't support it. So then the they option say... shouldn't be visible. Mm. The option shouldn't be there, or it should be greyed out. It should and be greyed out. Unsupported. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Anyway, we should have rebar now. As I was saying, uh, the, the the fan noise on it is actually very pleasant. Um, like you can hear the fans when they ramp up, but it's a very pleasant whoosh. There's no whine or hiss or you know high high noise clutter to it that some fans can have when they get you know when they ramp up. So good fans. Did we save the screen cap? We did. Yes. We have. Yeah. The heaven screen cap. And by the heaven screen cap, we mean the superposition Sorry. screen cap. <laughs> yes, we have. Coffee bench, bench and something somewhere else. I don't know where you put the heaven one. No, neither do I. Uh, I think Chris uh, uh, mirrored that when it came out. Um, sixty-four hundred. Cool. Yeah, sixty-four hundred. So yeah. I would presume that compares favorably to a thirty-sixty. Uh, yeah, have you got or any... 6600. Yeah. We've got a 6600 XT that we can compare versus, but unfortunately we don't actually have any similar cards. We, well, um... Uh, we don't have anything slow enough. No. Um, the 2070 <laughs> Super is not a million... Well, 2070 Super is going to trade blows with the 6600 XT, isn't it? So, yeah. We, we've got we've got cards in the category above this, but we don't have any cards in the same category as this. Yeah, certainly at least on the gaming side. Yeah. Yeah, sixty four hundred was the heaven score. Yeah. Yeah. Fair I enough. wouldn't expect the heaven score to change. It'll be interesting to see if it does, though, because mm. if it does, well, theoretically. See, we should see a massive uplift in everything now rebar is on. Um, so anything that does not improve was then limited by the car's performance, not the ish not rebar as such. So, yeah. I have absolutely no idea what this is doing in testing. No, me either. I'm hoping this is useful for the person mm. who has suggested it. Yeah. I think it's possibly... It, I think the... Uh, it doesn't matter what it's actually doing. What matters is that the score it's spitting out is comparable to cards well above its pay weight. Well, it, uh, well in one benchmark it was. Okay, in the yeah. others, it was less than half the speed. Yeah. However, if that goes up, because obviously those benchmarks, well, we we need to see what the effect of rebar is because we were running it with no rebar and everything we know about this card means that we were being unfair there. So, um, yeah. So if if we see a drastic uplift in all of those, we uh, we should theoretically, it will be interesting to see if it punches above its weight in compute. Mm. Uh, let's see. Kevin Holmes say got a high got a higher 1080 Ti score on superposition uh, at sixteen four one five. I can't remember what ours was. We've got it saved though. Um, Thirty sixty sounds about right. Yeah, that's what we're expecting. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, DP says, not sure if I have rebar on or off. If you got it, turn it on. There's not a lot that benefits from it in most cases. And there are some very niche instances where it can slightly harm performance. But it seems prudent to switch it on if your computer supports it because you might get a bit more support for it in certain areas. Some games that benefit from it will do better. And I think the number of games that are actually hindered by rebar are very low and the performance penalty is negligible, is my understanding. So it seems to be a case of, if it's supported on your system, then switch it on. The worst that can happen is it does nothing. All right. Um, margin of error. Ah, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's margin of error. Yeah, okay. There we go then. So rebar has had no impact on the compute bench side for this test, at 83, least. 83, 83, 4, 82, 6. Margin of error, I'd say. Yeah. 13, 601. 13706, 14983, 14832, 2.26, sorry, 22.26, 22.30. Yeah, rebar makes virtually no difference on CompuBench. Fair enough. Based off of these so. two. OpenCL trademarked. Uh, is a low-level API for heterogeneous computing. So, yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, using, absolutely. Yeah, gets used in deep learning algorithms, stuff like tracing, where many millions of repeated calculations. So, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So, um, so yeah. So, um, uh, okay. So, rebar has had no meaningful improvement on um, compute then, which is kind of interesting. How much did I undervolt the home GPU? Ah, uh, I forget. What I did was um, uh, I set the... I was undervolting on the curve, and I cap... And basically, what I did was I I lowered everything... Ah, uh, no, I can't remember what I took it down to. Basically, I lowered everything, so it tops out at... Um, it is aiming for no higher than 2 gigahertz rather than, like, 2.2. Um, but it's aiming to reach 2 gigahertz um, above the previous voltages. So it's aiming to hit 2 gigahertz at lower voltages than it was previously aiming for. Um, but I can't remember the exact numbers because I did it ages ago and I can't remember what it looks like. The net result was a very slight hit in performance, but it dropped my, temp it dropped my graphics card temperatures by about 10 degrees. So it meant that it was running in the mid-70s instead of the mid-80s, basically. Um, because I don't really want my graphics card in the mid-80s because it was ramping up the fans at that point. So. Um, benchmarking require large groups of higher quality assets that will benefit from rebar. I would agree with that. Although that much being said, theoretically, some compute should be using... Um, video memory, although I don't know enough about it at that point. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're expecting to see more of a benefit from rebar in the gaming benchmarks, yes. Did you do a folding at home before we rebarred? No. Okay. You've got 3060s in your folding rig, haven't you? Mm, I can't remember. I've never actually run FAH bench before. Fair enough. It's just because it was a case of I'm not going to let it complete a unit, so I wasn't going to grab a unit for it. Mm. Very well. But this uses effectively snapshot units. Yeah. To then a pre baked one. Yeah. It's just, unfortunately, all of the units they've got in it are old. Yeah. Understandable. So yeah. Yeah. So it'd be nice if I could chuck more stuff in there, but the problem is the project's somewhat underfunded. 
but also a case of they don't seem to ask for help. Mm. It did it. There you go. Right. Uh... Oh, no. All right, you've got a list of other results there to compare to. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, a 1060 is 96, and this is 94. Oh, okay. That's not terribly impressive. Yes, it is slower than a Threadripper 1920X. Yeah. However... Um, at, a, at a GPU task, it's slower than a CPU. Yeah. <laughs> but then on the flip side, of course, again, because this is an old, effectively an old benchmark... Yeah, um, it's just an OpenCL benchmark, effectively, yeah. at this point. Yeah. So that, that's the problem, is because it's an old one, technically the card may be capable of greater modern things that this test does not account for. So yeah, yeah, and the card does not support double precision. Fair enough. All right then. Okay, what are we running now? Uh, the same user unit, but implicit, which is just a different um, setup, mm, basically yeah. for it. Okay, which gives a completely different point scaling. Fair enough. All right. Which is interesting. So I need to just have a quick gander and see what we're looking at. Cool. All right. So um, so we'll run this. Then we'll run uh, we'll run the two Unigen benchmarks again, just so we can see how rebar has affected those. Then. Um, what's our plan? Because we've got the card working so far, apart from weird capture issues. We haven't seen any issues, so... Yeah, um, we've also not launched any games. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the next thing we could do is we could run up a couple of games on it and just see if it launches into games. And then if we still have time, we could look at how you set up OBS to stream AV1. I mean, I think yeah, we're going to run that's out of time what I'd look that, at next. Yeah. yeah, rather than the games. Yeah, because if you want games results, it's kind of a case of... True, other people have run games results already, yeah. Let's see what superposition does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brutal Pizza, thank you for the £10 super chat. Could a faulty PSU kill RAM slots on a motherboard? Make them inconsistently work? Um, I would go with no. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. Three different motherboards, four different CPUs, seven different RAM modules all have the same issue. I mean, what's the issue? The motherboard's broken. That's the issue. Well, three different motherboards. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I would at that point, I would try a different power supply. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a case of, well, you've got to try it and find out, it would, would be my answer to that. Um, yeah, try plugging in a different power supply, see if the problem goes away, basically. Um, stop changing too many factors at the same time and change one thing at a time, I would say. But yeah. Also, if all of those components are having issues, have you got any evidence that any of those components work? Yeah, that's it. You cut. You need to get to a known good setup and work forwards from there. Um, so yeah, power cycling because RAM not defected, not detected. Fix or okay, right. Power power cycling and no post is nothing to do with memory faults. It could be bad memory, but power cycling and no post. That could have absolutely nothing to do with the RAM. Um, and if you have not... It, so, yeah, that sound, that's got PSU written all over it. Power cycling and no post. So, yeah. The first thing you do in a no post power cycling issue is try a different power supply. But that's one of the first tests you try. In, I think in pretty much all of my... Uh, well, no, not in all of my videos. That's true. Sometimes I forget. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that could be power supply. However, that's the thing is, the fault you've described there, power cycling no post, that's not bad memory. It could be bad memory, but that's, you're describing a, you're describing a symptom there, not a diagnosis. Uh, faulty memory is a diagnosis, not a symptom, if you see what I mean. So yeah, I would absolutely try a different power supply there. 
Uh, is this capture? The lighting rays look broken in the benchmark, like they're artifacting. Um, we're not seeing any issues. It, um, did you see anything weird in that? I wasn't looking too hard. No. No. It's probably the capture. The capture looks awful. Yeah. The capture does look genuinely awful. And I'll say, I'm just going to full screen the capture just so I can um, see what I'm looking at. Full uh, windowed projector. Oh. Uh, window projector preview. Oh, yeah, that captures garbage. Yeah, there's there's so many there's so many um, just compression artifacts in that. I mean, it's well, yeah. There you go. So how's right. that compare? That's sixteen oh seven, and that is fifteen two seventy. Oh yeah, it's not I a huge it's... swing. It's only eight hundred yeah. points. It's eight hundred points on a fifteen thousand point yeah score. So it's a case of. But it might be statistically significant, but obviously we'd need to run... This is one test, though, which we'd need obviously to run is meaningless. Three, six on it on each configuration. Yeah. But... However, it has gone up. So, okay, what about... Um, see what heaven looks like, I guess, then. 16, 15, 1588. An Asus graphics device of some kind. Thanks. Yeah. A 3090? Something's wrong with that PC. 3090 Ti. Something's wrong with that 3090. PC. Something's wrong with that 3090, PC. 3090, 3090, 3090 Ti. Wait, what? 3090 Ti, 6900 XT, 3090. Eh? Hold on. Are we going mad here, or are we... Yeah, no, that's only on high. Yeah, that's more like it. For some reason, oh, when okay. I compared results for high, it compared them against extreme results. Ah, right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, user error is fine. Uh, a 2080 Ti is 18,000. Ten eighty Ti Ten eighty Ti is ten eighty Ti twenty eighty super. Something wrong with that? Mm, yeah. Ten eighty Ti thirty sixty Ti. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, twenty eighty Reve. Interesting. Yeah, we're landing about where we expect to land then, sort of high, thir well, high 3060s. It's done all right. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how we've got some 2080 Supers that are... Yeah. In... Um, what, like, of the same speed as a 1080 Ti, I, which I indicates, mm. which separately possibly indicates to me that superposition is really bad as a benchmark. Maybe. Either that, or some people have just submitted bad results. Yeah, you know, but it's the fact that there's like three of them. It's yeah. kind of a case where it's just like Cause interesting. Like, yeah, some people may submit results not realizing that their result is bad. You know. Yeah. Ten eighty Ti's, another twenty eighty, twenty seventy super. Fine. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like this benchmark is just bad for differentiating yeah. between a 1080 Ti and a 2080 Super. So I know which one I'd rather own. Yeah. I mean, it's worth noting that, um, for the record, I, I wouldn't run Superposition Benchmark as a gauge of speed anyway. It's a stress test. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this might be the indication why. All right. Um, what about Heaven, then? Yeah. Run. Uh, let's see. Okay, right. I'm going to look through the chat again. Interesting. Yeah. Um... A lot of those CPUs are being used for the GPUs as crap. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I'm not sure if we. I mean, spot- that was a fifty eight hundred X on a twenty eighty. Oh, okay, yeah. Which is not terrible. Yeah. Fine. Um, Very well. Okay, let's see what this does. Then, um, okay, well, let, let's do this then. Then we'll, uh, should we just download the latest uh, version of OBS and see what options it gives us for encoders? Um, so we can have a quick look at that. Because I don't think that's going to take very long. I think that's going to be a matter of download OBS and go, oh, look, it has AV1 options. Um, I mean, we could throw Handbrake at it, but I don't, um, I don't have a meaningful comparison set up for handbraking stuff. Because also most of the handbrake numbers that I know are CPU limited and this CPU is quicker than the CPUs that I have. So we don't have a comparison there. Oh, interesting. Apparently... Could a tw- guy... Oh, sorry, carry on. I was just going to say interesting. Apparently Twitch's comment was their plan to support AV1 in 2025. It's years or literally years away. Yeah. Yeah, literally years away. I'm hmm, I'm surprised they're going to spend that long getting there. Uh, although yeah. that much being said, I, like I can't imagine that it's easy to upgrade because they've probably got so much stuff that is so yeah. heavily optimized for H.265 performance. But still, that's a long way away. Yeah. Like that that's far enough away that it's a case of fine, in that case no one gives a crap about A V one. You know. Which is relevant bizarre. if you're on YouTube, but if you're on Twitch, basically it doesn't matter. So yeah, yeah fair enough then. Uh let's see. Uh Brutal Peter also said, uh, could a dying CMOS battery cause well, I mean a dying CMOS battery can cause no post issues. Um again, forget RAM not detected, focus on no post. Because don't forget, diagnostic LEDs lie. They are a guide, they're more information, but just because you're sitting on a RAM LED, that doesn't mean that RAM is actually the problem. It doesn't mean that your CPU's memory controller isn't broken. Yeah. Say. Yeah. And, I, you know, I appreciate the fact that you said you've tried multiple, lots of different hardware, but, yeah, you need to move, you need to roll back to a one known good system that absolutely works and passes all diagnostic tests and then start testing all of your hardware from that point onwards. Um, that's where I would be going from this point. Uh, so yeah. Um, so yes, uh, 400 quid for a 16K on superposition versus the 3080 Ti's price for 22K. Doesn't seem like an awful value proposition. Yes, although that much being said, we're seeing weird comparisons, so we're not quite sure. It seems also, like... superposition just seems like an awful actual benchmark. Yeah, this is the problem with benchmarks, is that in this case, if a benchmark does not differentiate hardware that is known to be drastically faster, yeah. then it's not very good. Because it's making a 1080 Ti appear faster than a 2080 Super. Yeah. And it's like, that's no. incorrect. Yeah, exactly. So... I would take these numbers with a pinch of salt, to be honest. Again, this is not a review. We're just throwing stuff at it and seeing what happens. So, uh, like, for example, at the moment, we're running Heaven again. We're basically just looking to see if the number has gone up since we turned Rebar on, because that tells us whether Rebar helps it at all in DX11. There you go. 6,400. Um, we had 6,400 before, so margin yeah. of error. Yeah. So... That has not gone up by a meaningful amount, which suggests to me that Rebar has not helped it in BX11. Well, has not helped it in these non-games. Yeah, that's true. Yes, you're right. 1080p, maybe CPU limited? Mm, Maybe. Not on something that's 3060 Ti class. Oh, yeah, true, yeah. And not with a 5950X. This is a 5950X, Which is also... It's a... Tuned yeah. 5950X with basically the fastest um, DDR4 you can do. Yeah. Can we check that rebar is actually on? Will uh, GPU no Z will GPU Z tell us that? Uh, GPU is, that or Z? The, is that on the It'll be on the toolkit, yeah. Yeah. Probably not the latest version, but CPU, CP, C, 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 Oh, GPU Z, yeah. Is it not there? No. Oh. Understandable. Have a bad day. GPU. 
Z. Download. 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 Yeah, GPU Z will give rebar info, people are saying. So we can confirm that we actually have rebar on. It's set to auto, which should be on. Resizable bar. Enable. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we've got it then. All right, then. We have all of the things. Very well. All right, um, cool. Let's throw OBS at it then and just see what encoder options we've got. So we can go, haha, look at this. And then we'll try a couple of games on it, I guess. Oh, no, it doesn't support NVIDIA physics. Oh, no. <laughs> Imagine that. A non-NVIDIA GPU not supporting physics. Oh, yes. Now my walls will crumble in a most unrealistic fashion. Download installer. Yeah, so we're not really going to be able to do any meaningful tests on this because we haven't prepared any canned tests. Um, but at least we can just open up OBS and just see what options it gives us out of the box. Because I don't know if we need a specific version of OBS for this. But again, that's that's a question. Do you need to download a fork of OBS to get AV1 support? A, um, OBS have stated that they do not support AV, AV1 on the NVIDIA GPUs because the 4090 supports AV1 or on the Intel Arc GPUs at this time. Okay, so we're expecting nothing from this yeah. then. AV1, AV1 NVENC is being added in the next beta so version. What, so what does support AV1? Where were like Linus Tech Tips getting their AV1 encoding from? Did they have a fork? I like, don't know. So how did everyone else do it? That's, that's the question yeah. I would ask from that. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Sure. Cancel. Yeah. Close. All right. Go away. There we go. And just get settings. Uh, stream. Oh, output is what we want. Yeah. Output. Advanced. Okay. Yeah. Quicksync and X264. So that has not. See, what would be super cool. Oh, wait. Hang on a sec. Quicksync is there. So that's the video card. Because we're on an AMD CPU. Mm. So yeah, it's picking up quick sync on the graphics card, which is interesting. Yeah. So um, so yeah, we've got quick sync support, but yeah, no AV one. Um, so yeah, what? Oh boy. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh boy. Yeah, you're, you you're can have many much containers. You are in the rabbit hole at the moment because you went to custom output. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go. Ah. Yeah. I, Show codecs, even if potentially incompatible. Uh, try changing. Hang on a sec. Go back. Go back to. Um, yeah, you, you're in the rabbit hole here. Yeah, um, because this is the advanced option, I was just wondering if it gave yeah. more options. I see, yeah. Not that would actually function, I don't think. Um, okay, so no, there's no... Yeah, so basically the answer is we've got quick sync. Although, what might be interesting is to slap in... Um, we could see if it can... S uh, no, you can, you can quick sync screen record anyway, so that doesn't prove anything. Yeah. However, I think the, the question I wanted to ask was, Twitch doesn't support AV1, but YouTube does. So could we stream games to Twitch at, uh, sorry, could we stream games to YouTube in AV1 on OBS? And the answer to that right now is no, because it doesn't have AV1 support. That's what I'm reading from this. <laughs> yeah, FFmpeg has AV1 support. That doesn't yeah. surprise me. Um, OBS supports AV1, but probably not on this card and hardware acceleration yet. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube does not support accept AV1 input, apparently. So, yeah. But, so... Because the question is, is obviously everyone's raving about using an Intel Arc GPU for AV1. And I'm like, how? No one supports it. Because that was the thing. Is just, I think we're all in agreement that AV1 is the future. But everyone's talking about how Intel Arc can be used for AV1. It's like, well, no, not really. It's got a hardware encoder, but no one supports it. So it actually doesn't matter. 
And if Twitch don't support it in Twitch, I'm going to support it until 2025. Was it 25? They said? According to some guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Twitch apparently aren't going to support it for potentially, uh, you know, years plus. Um, and could be for custom hosting. Yeah, but who does that? Um, I guess that's good in very, very niche instances. But, like, streamers are already a niche market. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm catching up on chat because I haven't been looking. Um, if OBS lets you call out directly to FFmpeg, then you could do an AV1Q. Yeah. Um, I think you can do that, Teltag, but... Um, I'm not going to even attempt to set that up live on stream. It's an OBS beta, apparently. Did you just say you'd done um, alpha? Yeah, I'm aware Where that Handbrake going? supports it. Um, however, Handbrake is not for streaming. It's for re-encoding. And that's not... That's... Yeah. Like, we know that you can do that anyway. Like, I can encode AV1 on CPU with Handbrake. Mm. Um, so that doesn't really say anything. It's the streaming application that makes it interesting because everyone's saying, by an arc, if you're a streamer, because you can stream in AV1. It's like, but you can't, is what we're seeing here. See, what I was... Now, to, to, put, to, to add context to this... The reason why I wanted to just... Oh, ah, are you getting anything interesting? Better, that's a better way of labeling that. Yeah, software... Hard oh, yeah, that's cool. It's actually showing what is a hardware encoder and what's a software encoder. Yeah. What are we on here? Beta? Yeah. This is the 28.1.0 beta 1. Yeah. So, again, by comparison, when I wanted to know if AMD's hardware encoder was any good or not, I installed OBS, I started it, and it immediately showed me the AMD video encoder as an option. So that's the kind of thing that I was looking for, is would that appear? Because that means that you can do hardware encoding on an AMD graphics card right now and just start streaming. However, on Intel Arc, no, you can't. It's not there yet. Which is not to say it won't be in the future, but it's not there now, well, while everyone else is raving about using these for streaming. Mm, uh, I see. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. You could use it for streaming. Yeah, can you custom... Because can... you can custom it mm. using these AB1s here. Is that going to do it on hardware, though? That's going to do it on... I have no C idea. Yeah. I have no idea. But then it's also a case of because you've got these encoders with custom outputs linking into FFmpeg, I mm. presume you could FFmpeg into the hardware encoder and you could set up some chain through that. Yeah. Which is obviously effectively what OBS is doing anyway, but it's obviously taken all those configuration steps yeah. out. Uh, so it's a case yeah. of... So if Handbrake and by extension, or if FFmpeg and by extension Handbrake can do it on an arc, which is, must be how everyone else is getting their benchmarks at the moment. So yeah, theoretically you can do it then. It just requires a horrifyingly custom setup, which requires fairly advanced knowledge because ffmpeg yeah. is not user friendly i don't care what anyone says the other option um, you've got is obviously studio in here oh that's interesting what does this give us if you go to broadcast there you go that's oh yeah you're, you're on broadcast broadcast where display audio device go like where? Where are we broadcasting to? <laughs> um, what's what's under this cog? Oh, that's that. Oh, streaming URL. With your streaming okay, so you would send it to RTMP, but then that would still require the receiver to accept your uh, codec. Yes. Yeah. So. However, that, that's how you could get... So that would allow you to stream into... Um, uh, well, what's our decision on if YouTube allow for an AV1 stream? I think, I think it depends on who you are. Yeah. 
this um, UI is awful. Stream Hilarious. to YouTube AV1. Uh, it's not an answer there. Most of the results when I'm looking for YouTube support are talking about VODs and stuff like that, not whether you can actually broadcast to them. Well, the simple, the simple answer will be to hardware encode an AV1 video, Sorry, to software encode an AV1 video with Handbrake and just upload it to YouTube and see what it does. Uh, so yeah. I'll give you an answer on that front. Oh, that would almost certainly work. It's broadcasting to them that we care about. Yeah. But it's also a case if you can't broadcast an AV1 anyway presently because the fuck are the options here? Uh, There's no codec listed here. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, we don't even know if it's in AV1. I don't mode. even know yeah. if it's even using hardware encoding. It yes, I see what CPU. you mean. Yeah. El Snarko still says, yeah, YouTube does not allow AV1 for live streaming. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, th that which, would I would, of... which I would understand. Yeah. Because, because of the computation expense, it means with the latency. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. So, to actually draw conclusions, because that's what I'm trying to do here, yeah. is... I know so that what we've learned is that everyone is saying, "Oh, everyone's going to be everyone's going to be streaming with an Intel Arc as their quote unquote coprocessor for streaming." It's like right now, no, absolutely not. We yeah. we're looking at this and we're going, "No, there's no practical way of doing this right now." Yeah. You could transcode in AV1 with a complicate with Handbrake or a FFmpeg setup, but there's no actual way of streaming in AV1 which is the only time when you'd actually care. Because at the moment... You care about recording in AV1. Yeah, but only if you're limited on... Only if you're limited on bitrate. And bitrate is much less of an issue when you're recording. I guess, but I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can go for a much lower bitrate. Yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't have value. storage requirements. Yeah, but right now, we can, we can circumvent the issues... Uh, we can circumvent the issues with uh, with that. Um, oh, hang on a sec. Yeah, where are? Yeah, we can circumvent the issues with H.264 just by brute forcing it with bitrate. However, when you're streaming, you can't do that because Twitch have very low maximum bit rates. Yeah, which is why AV1 would be interesting because you get higher quality at the same bit rate. However, if you can't actually stream anywhere in a meaningful way with AV1, then then what we're saying is that the Intel Arc has no use as a streaming encoder right now. Yeah. And uh, so far as we can tell, no one has actually got plans to support it in the near future. It will be coming in the future, but we're nowhere near there yet. So, yeah. And QuickSync is okay, but... Um, QuickSync is not going to be. I would have. I would wager that um, NVENC is better than QuickSync. I have to change that to get my M.2 slots to work. Oh, you filling with that? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Only because it still does H two six four very well. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I've used QuickSync in the past, and it's good. However, obviously, right now, what people are currently doing is they're using NVENC, and NVENC is very good. Um, because N certainly, for, certainly for video games, which yeah. has been specifically been optimized. Specifically yeah. set up for that. Yeah. Whereas like, the generic X264 standard has been set up for yeah. 24 frames a second cinema. Yeah. And also, like, my basis for comparison here is... Like, the reason why I'm being very critical of this principle is that I saw a Linus Tech Tips video that said um, streaming in the AV1 with your Intel Arc is potentially the future. Fine. <laughs> so, 
rant about that in a minute because it's not relevant to the current discussion. Um, incidentally, Intel Arc Control throws up a UAC prompt every spoon every up. Boot. Don't do that. Don't do that. So anyway. Um, so yeah, Linus Texas anyway. put out a video saying, oh, you'll be streaming on your Intel Arc uh, graphics card. And that's interesting as a concept, but the reason why I now have a problem with that is we've just tried to do that with one that we've bought, and demonstrably, this is not something you can do right now and not something that we're expected to be able to do anytime soon. Um, and in addition to that, when I was watching their video, I do agree that the AV1 examples they showed at low bit rates looked slightly better than NVENC, but not in a way that changes my world, you know. Looking at their video, I was like, oh, yeah, come on, it's slightly better, but I'm having to squint, you know. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see Intel at ain't shilling. I don't think it's that. I think they're just sensationalizing it because in theory, it's going to be great. And in theory, AV1 is absolutely the future and it will be good. But what I wanted to know is, is it good today? That's the bit that I wanted to know. And the answer to that is no. It's not good today. As, no, I don't think it's misleading. I think it's just sensationalist. You know, it's a case of, you know, because I think there's going to be a lot of people in the streaming space who have heard about the Intel Arc and heard that it's really good for video encoding. And they're going to be turning around going, should I buy one of these GPUs? And my answer, you know, before today, I was like, well, Theoretically, you can do that because having a dedicated GPU for video encoding is not a new concept. However, I've always said that it's not worthwhile because NVENC doesn't have a big enough performance impact to be worth being worried about. Um, however, what we're also discovering right now is that while it's possible that in the future, a low-end Intel Arc GPU might make a really good encoder card, that future is not now. It's not today. Things change quickly with technology. Twitch might update support overnight. Well, we need to find a better source, but a bloke on the internet reckons they're not going to do it until 2025. But, yeah, we need a better source on that. Yeah, but it's certainly... All of the commentary is that it's going to be a long time. Yeah. So it sounds like everyone is jumping the gun with AV1, saying, yes, this is going to be the future, but we're not there yet. In the same way that, you know, like, for example, when ray tracing came out and everyone said ray tracing will be the future, it's like, yeah, it, will, it probably will be, but it's not something you need to worry about for the next couple of years, so don't rush out and buy a ray tracing card or don't worry about it because it's going to be yeah. a while before it actually matters to you. Kotaku article from two years ago um mentions AV1. That was an article two years ago from NVIDIA saying that Twitch is getting AV1. Yeah. That was two years ago. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. If if Twitch were close to this, you'd imagine they would be saying something about it. Yeah. Because the the prize, the prize that we're looking for here, here is that Twitch would be able to turn around and say, everyone's stream will look better if they turn on AV1. And cost us less money. Yeah. If you were close to that, you'd want to talk about it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, of course, this this that's very subjective for me to say that. But, you know, reading between the lines, right now I'm sort of a case, I'm you know, I'm in the mindset of, yeah, the graphics card is it does exactly what we expected it to. Mm. Is it a is it a game changer for streaming coding? No. Full stop. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't... Well, I didn't expect it to be. Hmm. Twitch has been actively testing AV1 since at least May of this year. What's your source on that, Teltac? It's not that I disbelieve you. I just want to know where this information is coming from so we can, uh, so we can then hypothesize on this. Ah. <sighs> Did you get the GPU from Intel or did we buy it? Uh, we bought it, or rather, Caradog bought it. Caradog went online and he bought one. So this is an actual proper retail one. Uh, Teltac has linked his source. 
It's his sauce, mum's spaghetti. <laughs> it is rethinkresearch.biz. Oh, no. Oh, what? These are ARC cards, and Intel already has ARC. I forgot there's also a company called ARC Games. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um... Adobe. Yeah. Oh, fuck typing in that password. Yeah. There's no dates or anything. Yeah, I don't I find it hard to believe that it's going to be as long as 2025. But that much being said, we've again, there's no suggestion that it's going to be any sooner. Looks to have been a talk from Oh, okay. Yeah. However, testing and talking about it, that means that means it's in R&D. That doesn't necessarily mean it's anywhere near production. Twitch is using AV1 for the player. Are you sure about that? That would require them to be transcoding into AV1 in real time. Uh, I mean, well, you can transcode into whatever you want in real time, so... And Cloudflare has active support for AV1 right now. That's fair. Ah, Twitch's main problem is that almost no one has native AV1 decoding. That makes sense. Sweet. Yeah, Martin Barker says he's watching a stream on Twitch now in AVC1. Yeah. So if they're dis if they're transcoding into AV1, then that certainly suggests that they're close. So maybe it's not as far off as suggesting. Yeah. It just um, seems weird that cuz like OBS support for AV1, it's not there right it's not there today. Yeah. Which makes me very... However, the fact that we know that FFmpeg supports it means that OBS could have it in the very near future. In if, theory, if, yeah. if it's in FFmpeg, it's not far away, is, is what I would say to that. However, uh, it, it's a matter of the platform supporting it. And if Twitch are distributing and transcoding to AV1, then that would suggest that they're fairly close to it. Because if the transcode servers have got it, then yeah. Oh, El Snarko says AVC is H.264. So no, AVC1 is not AV1, apparently. Uh, we're looking at the OBS beta branch. We've got it installed here, and it's not there. Yeah. They've also said specifically that they're only adding support for the NVIDIA one anyway. Okay, on, yeah. On that, and then, beta, on that beta. Ah, okay. So the, the beta might support it on a 40 series, but they won't support yeah. it on an Intel Arc. Yeah. So in which case, we come full circle to the fact of, can you use the ARC as an encoding GPU? No. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. I'm a little bit dis I'm a bit sad about that because I was kind of like, if we had had OBS support for the ARC in a meaningful manner, I would have said to Caradog today, I would have said, can I borrow this over the weekend and try and stream on it this weekend? But the thing is, is just like, if it doesn't support it in a meaningful way, then I've no interest in trying it out. So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, my God. Fine. What are you trying to do at this the moment? This is the fourth update screen to get to the login screen for creative cloud why are you trying to get to creative cloud because then that gives uh whatever the hell the adobe video editing software is premiere yeah premiere yeah. okay we need to download premiere for that though right mm. yeah but it was also uh part of the arc drivers specifically mentioned about something about premiere in the release notes yeah I can't remember what it was. Yeah, uh, we notes. can look at that. I don't have any interest in video export in AV1 at the moment because it doesn't impact it, it because it doesn't impact me, and someone else has probably already done it. 
some versions of Adobe Premiere Pro, yeah. Mm. Shall we... Um... Uh, this is a solution waiting for a problem. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's a solution waiting for people to support it. Like It uh, is very much a solution to a problem, the cost yeah. of bandwidth. Yes, I agree. I, I, I think this is going to be great, but I think a lot of people think we're closer than we actually are to this being useful. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, so uh, how big is the download for... Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, beta apps, Photoshop, Premiere Pro. Is that what we want? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like if this is going to be a big download, I vote we switch gears and try some games. Oh really? Oh, you have to pick a plan and put in payment information and stuff. Uh, we're just trying to see if we can get Premiere on this. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, we've got... We're at 2 hours and 45 minutes. Um, I vote we throw some games at it. That's what I'm uh -huh. doing now. Spooderman, would you like a gamepad? Uh, if you've got one. Yes, gamepad is very easy to achieve right now. Cool. Graphics, preset, very low. OK. Click play. Ah. Uh, what was it? Oh, oh. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's one thing that the overlay doesn't have. Doesn't have any FPS monitoring. Oh. Mm. I, the, the performance right now will be very much not be entirely fair and balanced because I think Creative Cloud is throwing a wobbly. Ah, okay. Only only because I've opened the installer like nine times <laughs> because it just wasn't doing anything. But yeah. Uh, yeah. However, I have successfully right. launched the game. Okay, there's a gamepad. If you can take it off my hands and uh, then I can... Full. Whoop. You will not have capture. The HDMI is not plugged in. I will plug in the HDMI. Hold on. Wait. I want to launch the game and then quit the game. Okay. Righto. Just because there was a mention somewhere that there was an issue with performance in the menu on the first launch or something. Right, yeah. So I just want to... Unskippable cutscenes! Yeah. Also, this looks... Ah, there we go. Uh, is it supposed to go dark? Nope. Oh. All right, yeah, we're, we're seeing some graphical issues. Uh, I'm, you know what, fuck everything. Ah! All right, it stuttered. My sound! Capture with face cam. Your sound is now going to the capture card. All right, there we go, we have capture. Uh, welcome to the Spider-Man intro. Uh, so is that looking normal again now? Because there was some weird lighting flicker. No. Yeah, that's still dark, yeah. So yeah, there's some weird lighting issues in But yeah, that's why I wanted to just get to... Get to Yeah, like, look at that, that flicker, yeah. Yeah, okay. get to start screen. Quit out. Yeah. Reboots a Creative Cloud isn't throwing a wobbly. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, is this a known... Were you expecting this? What were you expecting? Slightly. Just because there was comment of there being issues with Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. Fine. Why would you web your toast to your mouth? Now it's going to have web all over it. Moving on. Very well. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, I'm going to catch up on chat. Warning, pay your bills. Yes, Graham. Shush. <laughs> Open your post. Um, you want to see a game with Vulcan versus DirectX? Possibly. Um, oh, this is a standard Xbox controller. Good God. This feels odd. Wow. All right, let's get the... I mean, it seems to be running. 
yeah, this feels pretty decent for 60 FPS. Yeah. Um, the, the capture is seeing a lot of stutter, and Boop. that's because the capture card is bad. So again, friendly reminder, we're using a really rough as guts um, capture card, which is why there's loads of frame droppage and stutter. Uh, it's actually smooth as silk on the preview monitor. Yeah, other than the gamma being all kinds of wrong. Yeah, I wonder if that's the issue, but yeah, okay, so we'll restart it and see what that does then. There you go, quit. Quit game. Quit game. Cool. Right. Are you... I'm just going to reboot. Yeah, fair enough. And then I'll relaunch it. Hmm. Ah. Martin Barker says, apparently 2022 to 23 for head partner streamers on Twitch was their target. Interesting. So, yeah, so top level rollout, um, end of the year, start of next year. So with that, Do you have a way of contacting? Is there a way of sending a message to Twitch? Not that I have access to, because yeah. I'm, I'm just an affiliate at the moment. Oh, no, I know, yeah. but just a case of, because if there is, it'd be legitimately worth sending them a message and going, hey, I know you're rolling out AV1, I have hardware support for AV1, roll me in. That might be interesting. It's funny you should say that because um, I have been very, at the moment, I have been considering, I don't yet have the numbers, but if I actually tried and tried to rustle up a crowd, I've been thinking about making a push for partner on Twitch. Yeah, you'd have to stream another time a week. That's no problem. That's very easy to achieve because I've been looking at my numbers and like where I've been streaming a lot of Elden Ring, my concurrence are really high yeah. right now. Yeah, you, then, were, you were over 50 last stream. Yeah. I need 75 yeah. for for partner. Which is doable. Yeah, and that's the thing. If I actually made a push, and actually, because yeah. I've been thinking of actually sort of saying on the main channel, hey, by the way, I want to make a push for partner. Could you guys like come and hang out in my streams for a week or, so, or two and yeah. bump up my numbers? Yeah. You know, because that's the thing is once I've got it, I've got it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I've been seriously considering, while I'm running Elden Ring and I've got high numbers anyway, yeah. actually making a push for partner. Yeah. Um, I would post that at the very least on the community tab. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking of doing that. and uh, But it might be interesting, yeah, if I could contact someone at Twitch and say, hey, by the way, I also have access to AV1 hardware encoding. Oh, controller's turned off. Um, oh, does it? Don't know. <laughs> Next question. Um how uh, how does the, how does this controller feel so awful by comparison? Don't know. Yeah, at the same time, feels so good compared to all of the generic ones. Yes. But also, nope, that has not fixed it. Right. Let's see if we can yeah. fiddle with some um, options. Yeah. So yeah, maybe if I can actually like uh, ah, okay. uh, maybe yeah, I'd have to see if I could. Like, maybe if I contact Twitch Press or something and say I'm a mid-sized YouTuber with access to AV1 hardware oh, encoding, cool. if you want to do, maybe you could do some, we could do some promotional stuff for AV1 and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. FSR2, that just works, apparently, in this. So, that's nice. This isn't an AMD card. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. FSR2 works on anything. Oh, okay. That's open, is it? Yeah. Yeah. But that's it just cool. works. That's cool, yeah. Because it wouldn't be surprising for it to work on an AMD card. It's not going to work on an... Uh, but yeah, yeah well, be. that's good It'll that it works on, on an ARC then, yeah. Yeah, right, okay. let's just swing that up to medium and then go back. Oh, hold on. Let's just make sure upscaling is actually on for FSR. Yes, apply changes. Continue. Yeah, uh, Martin Baker says, um, yeah, the numbers would let me apply. You still need people using bits often and such. Hmm, yeah, we'll see. It's I worth... mean, using bits op often isn't it's worth awful a try. if you're well, entirely trying to cheese it. Yeah, I mean, they do say that um, applying for partner doesn't necessarily mean you'll be accepted. Yeah. But on the flip side, you know, I've got a healthy subscriber number as well, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So what right. percentage do you get on bits? Um, don't know. Probably 50% would be my guess. Oh, that's not a terrible cost. Yeah. Recently, partners have been a 70-30 split in their favour. However, because they kicked up a fuss... Um, oh, no, I think it... I, yeah. 
They kicked up a fuss and Twitch changed it recently, I'm not sure. The split isn't great, but like I'm not interested in Twitch partner for the perks. Oh, no, I'm interested was... in it for the pull. Absolutely. I was also just thinking about it from the point of view of cheesing it. What's yeah. the financial cost of cheese? Yeah. Oh, I, ah, I see what you mean. Yes. Yes. What if I paid some people to pay me in bits? I mean, I'm not saying that's such a thing I would do. But if that's something that they were looking at. Hmm. Because, yeah, as I say, I'm not interested in Twitch partner for the perks of it because my understanding is right now it doesn't make a meaningful difference. Um, however, as I say, I'm interested in it for the pull because I'm trying to develop um, a quote-unquote influencer presence on the internet. Yeah. So, yeah. However, talking about Spiderman, seems yes. to be working. I was going to say. Other than the contrast or exposure being a bit funky. Can you fix that in the settings? I have put the brightness up to 75 and it has made it this, yeah. which is entirely playable. Yeah. But also, I'm used to playing on an OLED in HDR, so... Yeah, I was going to say, this might just be the shock of going to something as paltry as an IPS display. Oh! oh. F. Well, just as we were saying. Yeah. What was the error? <laughs> just as we yeah, were yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what the error is. <laughs> oh, it doesn't tell me what the error is. No, because it errors out all the time on my PC at home. Mm. But that... Oh, okay. But that's er it erroring out with my GPU no longer existing, which is an interesting error. My GPU apparently just doesn't exist. Fine. Okay. So this is potentially an unstable game. Yeah, all right. absolutely. Let's... Okay. Um, so, unless you've got any other, yeah, I mean, you could try it again. Or failing that, should we shift gears to Deep Rock because we can launch Deep Rock in different renderers? Yeah, if you want to grab that. Yeah, cool. Uh, let me grab it. Where's so my quick. EXE? Uh, get Steam on there. Get Steam installed. I have the uh, files for Deep Rock already downloaded. Oh. Is it there? No. No. I don't know. Please pay fifty nine ninety nine to re-enable your GPU. <laughs> That's store.steam. Please like, share, and subscribe to stop the game from crashing. <laughs> you may get a pop-up. Install. Install. Mm. Installing. <clears throat> Let's see. Are we going to try Afterburner Reva Tuna? Um, possibly. Does anything have overclocking support for Arc yet? I seem. Uh, to... I have no idea. Yeah, I seem to remember that. Um, I th is I th there enough space on this SSD? Yes. I think Afterburner doesn't support Arc yet. Last time I checked, or just it does. Oh no, know. actually no. It did. It didn't support the fan curve. Yeah. 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 We'll we'll quickly slap this on it just to see what options appear. I'm fairly certain that other people have already looked at this. Is that the... Oh yeah, that's that one. Intel driver has OC support. Yeah, I think it does. People like familiar apps, it would be... I would be interested to know if it's there. If, if Afterburner can overclock this card, I'll be suitably impressed. Oh, okay, it does download the beta versions. Mm. That's fine. Whatever. Run anyway. Yes. Run. Run. I will require your username and password. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any mainstream games downloaded. Um, this is not a review. Uh, oh, okay. How's that? Let me uh, swap places because I'll need to Steam Guard as well. Yes. Oh, you can scan a QR code. That's new. Oh, yes. I knew they'd updated the login screen. Let me. I'm going to try that. Steam. <laughs> Oh no, the Steam app is updated. It's going to ask me to log in and then ask me for a Steam Guard code that is on my phone. Allow to. I'm installing DirectX by installing Reva Tuner. Okay. Of course. Oh, awesome. If this asks for a Steam Guard code, I'm going to be furious. All right, Alan, so I've got to log into my phone. And if my phone asks for a Steam Guard code, 
I might, then yeah. Got to put in archaic usernames. Back from the days when I thought Leet Speak was cool. 2004. L4. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Latency. Uh, right, hang on a sec. I'm trying to remember my Steam password. Is it not in LastPass? Right. Can you not just autofill from LastPass? Uh, I don't have it turned on at the moment because of reasons. Um, right, scan a Steam QR code to sign in as me. Show Steam QR code? You should only need to enter a code if the phone doesn't have internet access. Use the mobile app to sign in. I'm on the mobile app! <laughs> Show Steam Guard code? Oh, right, okay, yes, no, this is fine. Uh, right, show scanner code. Okay, there we go, yeah, we're there, we're there. Tap the scan button. I thought it was still... Bloody hell, that was impressive. Did you see that? <laughs> I was, I was like, it wasn't even in the box. I just went, uh, at the screen, and it just instantly found it. All right. Apparently we're in Farnham. <laughs> oh, there is a Farnham nearby. Interesting. I thought Farnham was 80 miles away from here. All right, it's okay. Anyway. Have you tapped yes? Yeah, I have. All right. Uh, mm. You clicked on the tick. Okay, right. Sorry. I haven't actually installed... I haven't actually had to log into Steam since the new version came out. That was very confusing. That is what Arc shows you. Oh, wow, okay. Let's just change this to something that might be slightly more familiar right. as well. Who, who wanted Reva Tuna? No. <laughs> there you go. You have nothing. You get nothing. You lose. Good However, day, sir. I'm just going to turn off all of the... Gee, Caradog, why do you have so many CPU threads? <laughs> Hi! Can I introduce you to my 32 threads? Oh my god. It's not going to work. Why do we care? <laughs> Caradog, I'm begging you. <laughs> it doesn't work. We don't care. Frame rate. Oops. Frame rate. Show the answer is no. Uh, MSI Afterburner will Afterburner. will not give us any useful stuff. Uh, apparently, you can overclock from the Intel software, so that Frame time. I'm sure that works just fine. Um, however, from Afterburner, uh, from Afterburner, no. Don't know about. Does anyone know if uh, the EVGA Precision one can do it? Because that's separate, isn't it? I forget that those are not the same thing. How is there another Farnham nearby? I don't know, Teltac. That's what it told me. It was showing Tollard Royal. It was near Tollard Royal. Which is nearby to where we are. Thank you. Where's the slidey thing? Ah, oh, there. Her. Aha. We have frame rates now. Yes. I now need to copy, cut that into st yeah. Oh, it won't have made Wait. the thing yet. No. Steam apps, common. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good. It has made the common folder. Bonk. Deep. And Derg. See, program called Steam. Yes. Hopefully it's up to date, because Deep Rock got updated recently. Discovering existing files. Yeah. I assume that that machine has been downloading game updates, because it sits on all day, so. It is downloading a small update of approximately 3 megabytes. Yeah. 
Although DRG is one of the most astonishingly efficient games I've ever seen. Play in DX12. There we go. That's what we wanted. So this game allows us to launch it in DX11 or DX12. So we can also just the speed it rips through all of those setups. Yeah. And stuff. God. SS SSDs, man. So uh, let's slap this on to well max settings because we're at 1080p um, and see. That feels horrid. How so? Oh. What's man. wrong? There is approximately an hour of delay. Really? That's rough. Yeah, okay. But also, that's just a problem I remember having with DRG. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, overall quality. Yeah. I'm just making sure it's not trying to HDR. Yeah, no, it isn't. It's fine. Overall quality. Oops. Ultra! Cool. Have we got a frame rate counter? It doesn't look like we do. No, we've only got frame time, unfortunately. Yeah. What does report the frame rate, then? Does the driver report the frame rate? Uh. Uh, Steam will have a frame rate counter if you shift-tab... Uh, don't shift tab until uh, without telling me actually. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. I'm not shift tab. Yeah, um, uh, okay. that's everything on ultra. Yeah, we'll, we'll use Hold this. On. Can I have a decent? Uh, yeah, we can't have TAA. Does that look less awful? Kind of. I mean, it's only DRG. It doesn't change your world, but yeah. Okay, hang on a sec. Let right. me. Uh, I'll take us on to face cam so we can um, switch on the thing. Uh, yes, we have a frame rate thing on at the moment, but yeah, we, we need to... Uh, let's get a frame rate counter on first. Just use the Steam one. Huh. Hold on, I'm just going to turn that on as well. Oh, did you have the frame rate turned off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That works. Okay, right. We now have a frame rate. We cool. are v-synced. Yeah, so That's yeah, cool. Good. Yeah, so if we uncap it, now we can actually see what the real the frame graphics. rate is. V-sync off, apply changes. And max FPS, turn off the limiter. It scaled all the way up to 120 pretty that's quickly. A good, that's a good sign. Ah. Uh, yeah, just turn off the limiter. There you go. Oh, that does actually turn it yeah. off. Cool, okay. There you all go. right. Uh, 107. Okay, yeah. Whee. 232, 260, yep. 270, 280. We're getting, a delightful, we're getting a delightful little chip tune tune from the coil wine now. Yeah. All right. So if you yeah three thirty one if you look into the space rig to actually give it a difficult scene, or I tell you what is um if you go back if you go to the um oh okay you're changing a lot of things okay right I was seeing if it could change the rendering mode live no yeah I was no. just wondering if it could absolutely not because that would be absurd yeah. because like GTA can really yeah oh and like other stuff. Oh, can. oh, okay. I, I'm amazed that you can do that in real time without restarting the game. Fine. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. We, we need to actually get some kind of um, like we, we need to give it a difficult scene, not an easy scene. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if you go oh, yeah. to the class selection, I think it is. Um, so, it, uh, where you what? Is that a screen or? Yep. So, go, go into one of the bays. And uh, on the left, yeah, character selection. Uh, oh, okay, that's easier than I thought. I th um, in that case, come out of that one and just look on the perk board behind you. That's a hard... Yeah, I was going to say, these menus have smoke in the background, which, which are surprisingly demanding. Um, okay, that's giving us some fixed value. So 284... Um, yeah. Although the frame times are really low there, which suggests that it's not that difficult. I mean, of course, the frame time will be low because that it's a second divided by oh, that to yes. give it frame time. Okay, yeah, yeah, forget that. All right, fair enough. Well, we're getting a rough idea here. We're getting sort of hold on. Where is yeah? The just exit main menu there? is giving it trouble. Though I think that's what I was aiming for. Yeah, because that's got the smoke in the background. That's the tough scene that I was looking for. Just the main menu. So yeah, 200. Okay, we're getting an idea. 
So we launch that in DX12 mode. So if we launch it in DX11 mode now and we see if that performance tanks, that's the test that I wanted to do. Go start drinking. Yeah, we could. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the coil wine, man. I mean, I don't think the coil wine is loud enough to be able to hear it through a case, but it's there. Right, is this DX11? Yes. Slightly lower, but not by a... Uh, not in a huge sense. Yeah. It hasn't crashed the performance of the game, has it? No. So... Again, these are not scientific tests. Yeah, yeah, this is not a review, blah, 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 blah. These are not objective. We're just sort of looking around. That looks lower than it was. Yeah. Yeah, what if you look out the window when we were getting like 330? Hmm. Yeah, it's about yeah, the same. Yeah, the peaks are the same, but I feel like the averages and the lows are lower. Oh, yeah, we're crap. That scene it's struggling with. That's 90 FPS. Well, yeah. 85, 86. Yeah. Do you want to drop back into DX12 and do that same perspective where we're just looking across yeah. the space? I'm going rate? to stand on that and put the cursor over the globe. Yeah. Which is. It's, really, it's really having difficulty with that scene, isn't it? Yeah, 87 to 88. Yeah. Unironically, the beer pouring can be difficult. Okay, Teltac, we'll go and get beer. We'll get beer. We're going to get a Leaf Lovers special. You'll love it. <laughs> it sounds like a hard drive seek noise on like a 10,000 RPM drive. I mean, that's what coil wine sounds like. Have you ever had something that coil wines? Not that I've ever heard. Yeah. This yeah, no, now you have. <laughs> but then you complained about my nine eighties coil whining. They were it wasn't as audible as this. They were they coil whines, just not terribly. Double the frame rate. There you go. There's the DX twelve versus DX eleven performance. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. There you go, right there. So it looks like the peaks are fine, but the the averages and the lows I just completely tank on DX11. But that's exactly what we expected. See, though, that, you know, now we need to sit in this position hmm. with the 3090 on DX11 and to 12 and see if it's a game. Yes. We now need to sit. We yeah. have to see if it's the game. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, all right. I mean, we're, we're kind of out of time, so let's do this as our last test, and yeah. then, then that way we've sort of done a bit of a test of everything. So um, what I would suggest is for anyone who's watching that is just like, I want you to run this benchmark, um, wait, for the, wait for the VOD to come up, and then leave a comment on the VOD saying what tests you would like us to do on an official review. We haven't decided if we're going to do an official review yet, but leave a comment with what tests you want us to run and we'll have a look at those and see how many of them we can do if we actually do a review video on especially it. Especially if they're not games. Yeah. We, we especially if they're like, yeah. oh, can you run this compute benchmark? Yeah, we're looking oh, for... Oh, can you run this memory benchmark? Can, yeah. You know, the stuff that doesn't appear on the Games yeah. Nexus reviews. That's the it. Hardware unboxed reviews, stuff like that. Don't ask us to time spy it. No one cares. Everyone else has time spied this card already. However, what we want to do is we want to run tests that other people haven't run. Yeah. Or if it's a case of like, oh, can you know? Uh, oh yeah, thread in suggestions as well. Yep. Also, you can jump on the Discord. Uh, you can jump on the Teltac. I what? How do we not have a Discord command? Oh, there it goes. Okay, it was, it was delayed. It's fine. Sorry. Is Teltac about? Yeah, Teltac is about. Could that, you it, make it, an it, actual thread oh, in okay. the suggestions? Yeah. Called Arc. Arc A770. A770. What's this thing again? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was about to call it an Arc A770K. <laughs> I was just like, no. 
Oh, do you know what would be helpful? All the things, yeah. Uh, may as well plug in the same setup. We didn't un uh, we didn't un remove the Nvidia software, did we? No. Yeah. Cool. Which proves that the Arc software didn't completely wet the bed on this setup. Yeah. Which was yep. a massive improvement over some of the early review stuff. Yeah. Well, so at the very le least, it appears that possibly the update that came out four days ago, three days yeah. ago, might have fixed some of yeah. that extreme we bed wetting. We had a crash in Spider-Man, but you said you've been having stability issues with that particular version of Spider-Man anyway. Yeah, so Spider-Man seems to just forget that my GPU exists. Yeah, so that doesn't actually prove anything at the moment. Yeah, touch wood, apart from capture, we've yeah. had, apart from capture and apart from some design choices which we disagree with, yeah. Um, we've had no catastrophic issues so far, have we? <laughs> it's gone through all of the tests in a way that we would expect it to. Again, we haven't done long testing. We haven't played a game for an hour, but... Yeah. Press. My God. Excuse me? Even louder coil <laughs> wine from the 3090. Oh. MSI. The 3090 is singing a tune right now. Is that audible? Could you guys hear the coil whine? There we go. Nearly 400 FPS. Are we in DX12 or 11? Uh, I don't know. Good, okay. <laughs> that is a tough scene because even the 3090 is tanked on that scene yeah it's gone down 200 fps yeah. basically if anyone wants to reproduce this you can see where we're standing we're standing exactly on the windowsill bar looking at the map globe yeah with the with the little dot actually on the map globe yeah Yeah, we're on DX12 at the moment. Yeah. Well, I, I can't hear a difference when you're... Can you not it. hear a difference in the cool one? It's going... Oh, it's da, 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 oh, da. Let's do it again. Oh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> My hearing isn't what it used to be. You're younger than I am. It's oh, great. All right, so we'll do a DX11 test. What was that about 200 we were getting? Yeah. Something like that. Two, uh, 264. Uh, let's see. Um, apparently the coil one was audible. Yep. Uh, does exclusive full screen give better performance? It almost certainly will do, but we're looking at comparative performance here, not how high can we make the numbers. Yeah. It so, doesn't actually matter what the specific number is. Yeah. It matters that w what matters it, it, the it's the relative is. scaling between the two numbers. Yeah. If we were trying to make Deep Rock Ooh, Galactic... 600. <laughs> 640. Yeah. If we wanted Deep Rock Galactic to run as fast as possible, then yes, full exclusive full screen will do that. 141. Yeah. So again, Which is 120 FPS lower. Noticeably lower. Yeah. So, yeah, so this test proves nothing, or at the very least it shows, it, well, in this test... It proves that it is... DRG's DX12 um, implementation renderer. is very good. Yeah, so D, so if you, if you play Deep Rock Galactic, you want to be on DX12, is what we've learned here. Yeah, I'll just double check I'm not like... Throttling um, does the no? uh, does the Radeon does the Radeon RX five hundred series support DX twelve? Yes, excluding ray tracing, obviously. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, because I know a friend of mine has a five eighty, and they were having issues with um, Deep Rock Galactic the last time we played it together, and we changed which renderer we were on, and that fixed the problem. But I can't remember what we changed it from yeah. or to. What's the oldest we've got? It's going to be... 
the oldest. I mean, Nine. I've got a third. Uh, we haven't got anything old AMD wise, have we? Not that works. Yeah. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. I actually, I lie. I might have. Hang on a sec. What is this? Okay, that's my dead RX three eighty. Uh, okay. That's got that's got uh, VRAM issues. I might have a two eighty X or a three eighty X out the back. Just because that'd be interesting to see for the DX, but that's not specifically relevant to this stream. No. However, interesting. Interesting to see that massive swing in performance on the DX. Oh, that's not the card I thought it was. Never mind. Uh, 12 to 11. Yeah. Nope. Um, oh, they're, they're all down. Here's, where, here's all the a, old AMD. There we go. There it is. Um, yeah, I've got a 280 here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 280X. So, like... For bonus, if you care, if we if we want to continue exploring this Deep Rock Galactic, thing, yeah, I'm happy to check it on now. Yeah, like again, we're 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 off topic. This doesn't really matter about the Intel Arc anymore. However, if we're exploring Deep Rock oh, Galactic performance, is it warmed up already? That's really rather warm, given how short a time that was running. Mm. Uh, we're, we're pumping pumping 300 watts into it, aren't we? Yeah. Last time I knew this graphics card works, but it has not been powered up in a hot minute, so. Um, I'll let you wire that up. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah, so Winston Wolf says, yeah, the test shows the performance drop from DX12 to 11 is the same on the A770 as the 3090. And that in a way, yeah. um, while this is not scientific, but that's interesting to show that um, going to DX11 doesn't automatically tank your performance on an arc. Because in that particular game, we saw an expected drop of performance. Ah. Okay, yeah, we can... Uh, yes, yeah. We're just switching out the capture cards because um, the R9280 uh, yeah. doesn't have um, full-size display port on it. I probably have a mini display port somewhere, but you're already holding that now, so. Um, let's see. Let's go. Where's the USB? There's the USB. <laughs> Lead Farmer says he keeps reading the bottle as asphalt. It's asphalt. You will need to change the device. Uh, sure thing. Right. Uh, what are we on? Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get rid of the cam link. Be gone. Live gamer. Oh, that's the wrong one. Do not change XR the live gamer. XR one. Change to XR one. I tell you one thing. This asphalt is fucking me up. There we go. I'm a lightweight on a good day, but this Aspel is 6.8% um, 6 6 and it is decking me. <laughs> Did um, <laughs> says Caradog. There you go. Mm. We're going to need AMD drivers. Absolutely. <laughs> AMD drivers. Oh, Wi Fi. Where Would you be I? a darling? Uh, right, I'm going to use the bathroom again. I'll be right back while okay. you do the, the AMD drivers. I will grab some AMD drivers. Uh, what was this again? You need to go to Lily's and get the Gladiator. Um, this is a co this is under consideration, Tolkak. What uh, is it? It's a 280X. What? R9 280X. R9 280X. Submit. Oh. <laughs> Legacy drivers. Very well. Oh, the last version was Adrenaline 2020? Oh no. <laughs> Wait, really, Chris? NVIDIA have actually removed LHR with a driver update from the 30 series. Huh. Sorry, Intel's latest driver improves the 30 series GPU performance. What? 
What? I don't understand what that means, but okay. How does Intel's driver improve the performance of a 30 series? Huh? What's occurring? Intel's latest driver, this game ready driver, blah blah blah, optimizations for GeForce 30 series GPUs. Why is the Intel driver improving the performance? Of NVIDIA GPUs. Who is saying that? To the... Oh, Chris, Chris, you wrote Intel. That's why. That's why I'm confused. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> the confusion has been resolved. Oh, sorry. Crunch. Everyone. Oh, sorry, everyone. <sighs> oh, uh, put it on the wrong way around. Uh, mm, it, mm. Shamalama right. ding dong. Also, yeah, the latest the latest NVIDIA driver improving 30 series GPUs. Well, yeah, of course, it's a current gen base if, to all intent and purpose, a current gen GPU. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> the confusion is that you're a retard, yes. <laughs> <sighs> Currently glad you use speakers. Yeah, apologies to anyone. I hopefully hopefully the limiter caught that. I'm getting a snack. Mmm, <laughs> snacks. Can I interest you in a pop tart? I yes. don't have a toaster, but oh. if you if you'd like if you if you accept cold pop tarts. Absolutely. As far as I'm aware, I've only ever had a pop tart once. You've got to have them toasted for the real experience. And apparently, what? Well, mm, Okay. Did you replace the buttons in this mouse? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's got kale... Uh, um, blues. Blues, yeah. yeah. What do you think of them? Yeah. Fair enough. They were not as clicky as I was expecting for ones that you had replaced. Mm. But then I remember you said, obviously, blues. Yes. Not the reds. You're looking at it weird. <laughs> I mean... What were you expecting? It looks like cardboard. <laughs> it does. It looks like I could take several of these in a row like this, stick a nail for it and have it as a roofing option. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good in a toaster. A box of them is £2.50. Um, so, you know, and as I say, toasted, they're, they're way better. Mm. Yeah. There we go. We didn't we didn't get Caradog's Pop Tart virginity, but he hasn't had one in memory. Mm. I haven't had a chocolate one. Mm. Fair enough. I like the yeah. chocolate ones the best. I had American friends where I said I'm having a Pop Tart and they said what flavour? And I said chocolate and they said chocolate and what? And I'm like Chocolate and chocolate. I don't know. It says chocolastic on the front. On America, they're, they're, it's chocolate and fudge, and I'm pretty certain it's got the same picture on the front. So I'm fairly certain that this is the chocolate and fudge one in America, and in the UK, it's just chocktastic. Make of that what you will. Welcome to the we're past the three hour, three and a half hour mark of the stream, everyone, <laughs> where everything just goes to hell, and we're like, well. We've got about 10 people still watching at this point, so this is where we live now. <laughs> hmm. The filling's good. Hmm. As I say, stick it in a toaster so it's a hot filling. Really good. We've lost the mouse, everyone. Damien Evans says stick it in the PC. <laughs> I mean, we probably could. <laughs> and it's a 280X, so who cares? You're giving me ideas, stop it. Hmm. 
Uh, okay, right. Focus. Focus, Caradog. I'm doing fine. Mm. <clears throat> 6,900 XT for 900 euros. That's what? Uh, 750, 800 pounds at the moment? No, it's 900 pounds. Don't forget the euro's tanked harder than the pound has. It's still basically one to one. Really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, if you wanted to buy one, it's basically one to one. Oh, fair enough. So, yeah, 6,900 XT for 900 quid then. Depends where your allegiances lie. Mm. Because if you're happy to buy second hand, 3090 to 700. I was going to say, you can get 3090. Yeah, that's 3090 money at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. There have been some 3090 TIs popping up at the 900 ish pound mark. Mm. Bloody art control. Yes, Liam, we're still here. <laughs> I just strongly recommend that you reboot the computer. No. no. I can tell you that your graphics card appears to still work. Good. And Ooh. it's good for 80 FPS. Ooh. I mean, that's strong progress, at least, isn't it? It's good, to kn it's good to know that when you put in a really old graphics card, it's not as good as a new graphics card. Because sometimes you put in an old graphics card and it performs very well, and you're like, what does this tell you about new graphics cards? Do you want to take a guess? 30. That didn't get hit as hard. Are we in DX11 at the moment, or 12? I don't know. Whatever oh. it defaults to. We, we are in one mode at 58. Okay, well. That mode is... <clears throat> not no. DX12. Yeah. I, think we don't, I don't think we have DX12 support on this card. Can anyone confirm that? It's in 11. Okay. Can anyone confirm? Does the, uh, does the 280 actually support DX12? It's certainly using legacy drivers, so I don't know. Because, mm. yeah, that was not as badly affected, was it? Like the... Well, I mean, it went from 70 to 58. Yeah, but that's... Um, that uh, 70 to 58, that's like... Um, that's like sort of 12 or 15 FPS, whereas previously we were seeing swings of like 100 FPS. Yeah, but you... <clears throat> Although as a percentage, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, what's yeah. the actual percentage? Yes, DX12, apparently. Oh, it is on the screen info. I did spot that at the top there, but I wasn't sure if it was accurate or not, per se. Yeah. Oh, yeah, D3, D12, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at those awful frame times. I was going to say, that's some hot stutter right there, isn't it? Yeah. The actual frame rates aren't bad, but the stutter, bro. That's cleaned up now. Yeah. It's too old for DX12, basically, yeah. is the answer to that. Yeah, so the card doesn't care. It does support DX12, but not really. It can't. It it's cannot. The, le it can't leverage DX12. Yeah, what that will be, I would guess, is the um, swapping to DX12 makes it so an awful lot of the stuff is on the game manufacturer mm. to optimize and set up, whereas in DX11 that will be on the driver team. Mm. So in DX11 it will be up to AMD. 
on the X12, it's up to the DRG team. Yeah. And the DRG team is going to be smaller than AMD. Yeah. So they're not going to bother. Who cares? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So w that is that lower than DX11 was? It is, isn't it? DX11 was yeah. giving us mid fifties, wasn't it? So, yeah, yeah, like fifty eight. But yeah. it, but more importantly than the actual frame time it was mm. giving, sorry, than the mm. FPS average it was giving, the frame time was consistent and didn't yeah. have these massive deviations. Yeah, that frame time will make it feel bad. Uh, can I just make that bigger? Uh, we've got an R9 280X in there at the moment. Um, the reason why we've dropped a 280X in there is we are doing comparisons between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 across the Intel Arc, the 3090, and this graphics card. And we're just making observations to just because um, we're just looking at games that actually allow us to switch between DirectX 11 and 12. Yeah. And in this case, Deep Rock Galactic is a very easy game that allows us to switch between them and observe what differences we get running in different renderers. Because, yeah, hopefully that's far more visible just to see how mm. incredibly inconsistent the bottom one, which is frame time, yeah. is, and then how inconsistent and the, the FPS, FPS is. itself has got massive micro stutters. This is what yeah. people were talking about with AMD drivers, wasn't it? The micro stutter. Mm. This is what they were talking about, why, why AMD, well, yeah. at least old AMD cars and old AMD drivers are bad. Yeah. This is what they're talking about. Now, the new ones, I believe, are significantly cleaned up. Yeah. Have but you... I've not, da I've not really dailyed one. No. I would expect an NVIDIA card from the same age as this mm. to do basically this as well. Because the drivers at that time just didn't care. Mm. But yeah. Should we drop the 6600 XT in there just for, because we're here? Yeah, can do. I was just going to do a comparison between that and then... Oops. Yeah, because like we're we're running, we're looking for four hour, we're looking for a four hour stream, and we're doing comparisons. So, in for a penny, yeah, in for a absolutely. pound. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just gonna pull it up in DX11 mode and show mm. how the performance is only slightly better, mm. but the actual FP, uh, but the actual frame rate consistency is so much higher. Hmm. Uh, just look at is how it still a micro stutter if it's that bad? Yeah, well, the thing is, the, the stuttering is so rapid that it doesn't register on the FPS counter. Because look, if you look oh, now... Oh, wow, yeah. It's just a flat line now, isn't it? Yeah, because whilst there are minor deviations in it... That's fine, though, isn't it? This yeah. is entirely fine. This would be awful to play with V-Sync on. Yeah. Just because you'd actually get V-Synced all the way down to 30 hertz refresh. Yeah, because we're less than 60. Yeah. So it'll go down to the next number that it can achieve. Yeah, yeah. which is why 120 hertz refresh screens mm. having a 40 hertz mode is so good, because it means that this would actually just drag down to 40. Yeah. You'd which... be triple, you'd be um, every third yeah. refresh effectively would be possible so and that's still a worst case scenario but it's a it's a worst case scenario that's still better than yeah. 30 so yeah. it's also a case of the frame time in milliseconds mm. between 60 and 30 half of the frame time yeah is actually 40 fps yeah so from an actual feel perspective the actual seconds feel mm. 40 is massive improvement over 30, mm. even though it only sounds like only 10 FPS. Yeah. This kind of information, like my friend I mentioned who uh, had, was, had weird performance issues in Deep Rock um, before that we fixed, um, like they're the kind of person that, would, that doesn't know about frame times and stuff like that, but would absolutely be able to feel it. Yeah. And this would be very interesting knowledge to demonstrate to them you know, that time when the frame rate wasn't awful, but it felt awful, this is what you were seeing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Because, like, I am I was aware that this kind of stuff existed, but this is just a really good example of it in action. Yeah, absolutely. This is a really clear example of frame times in action. 
because we can switch between good and bad on the fly. Yeah. So yeah, it's good for free sync. Yeah, free sync and G sync are also there to combat this problem. But they would not fix that micro stutter. No, no. That micro stutter is that's not salvageable. That is not salvageable yeah. by external means. The only way of fixing it is by not having it. Yeah. Effectively. My, um, what the what free sync, free sync would it, resolve this. Yeah, because bearing in mind, like if we look out the window, the frame rate will double. Yeah. So, so if I just do this and go back to being here. Here's an easy scene and we've got double the frame rate. So now what um, FreeSync would enable us to cap to now get better refresh rates that can move dynamically on that wild swing of frame rate. However, the micro stutter, no, FreeSync can't fix that. But um, it's also the case that the thing that's really interesting as a mm. statement is with this configuration, the 3090 is only six times faster than that card. Hmm. To yeah. render this scene, it's only six times faster. Yeah, but I feel like that's missing the point. No, no, no but that's but that demonstrates how it's not just about how fast the the, the card is. Yeah, it's not just how, about how fast yes. the hardware is. This scene is effectively limiting the thirty nineties performance because it was so simple by mm. comparison. Yeah, this go, this harkens back to a conversation we had that, like a couple of weeks ago when I said to you what frame rates do you get with your 3090 on a 4K screen? And you said, well, when it depends on whether the game can do it. Yeah. And this shows that, because obviously a 3090 should be way more than six times faster than a 280X. Yeah. But if the game can't go six, any more faster than that, yeah. because you're hitting engine limitations, yeah. then your faster graphics card isn't actually worth anything. But it's also the case of it's the fact of also it was still six. 100 fps yes yeah obviously that's fast enough for anyone yeah and it's kind of it's kind of a case of you get to that point where it's like the performance scaling mm. demonstrates how 1080p is so irrelevant for a 3090 yeah kind of thing and it, yeah. and it shows how the interplay with all of those things about the difficulty of the rendering workload the resolution you're at the actual performance of the card and things like that benchmarking is hard yeah, yeah, and and it's not just the running the benchmark; it's coming up with the scenarios and the things that actually make sense and are actually relevant to people, mm. and the things that kind of seem sensible. Because it's a case of it's like you could have a thirty ninety or you could have a ten sixty, and they would feel exactly the same on this screen. Yeah, because this is a sixty hertz ten eighty p. Non-gaming IPS display. Once we go past 60 FPS, there's functionally zero difference. Yeah. And the we, only... we can make arguments about having a more up-to-date frame, yeah. but we're getting into the weeds there. Yeah, and it's still a case of, at most, you're not going to save the same amount of time for the fresher frame yeah. than you would on just going up to 120 hertz screen. Yeah. Sort of thing, and just stuff like that. So it's just very interesting on that side. Yeah. Oh, just an interesting... Uh, go and pour a beer, just because Teltac was just like, oh, beers are really hard to pour, so let's just see what frame rates we get for that. Well, we're not going to do comparisons for this. I just want to see if the frame rate tanks while um, Winston... I can't remember the robot's name. Um, so, yeah, just uh, just do a Leaf Lovers special, because I can't remember how much money I've actually got in this game. 37,000. Yeah, that's not... Yeah, I only did one because we don't have a Parsi, but I suppose when you drink certain beers, you get on-screen effects of um, of depending on what the beer does. Because in this game, different beers give you different buffs for the stage that you're about to do. Um, so, uh... excellent. If you leave the area and come back in, we'll get a different dance. Um... Oh, okay. We got the same dance. Fine. Whatever. Anyway. There we go. Graceful. Heck you, Mission Control. Uh, fine. Okay. That didn't seem to make a, a big difference. <laughs> Deep Rock Galactic is a really good game, by the way. Uh, fine. 
Okay. So, um, do we care? Uh, so, do we care about looking at the sixty six hundred XT to see how AMD drivers have improved because we were talking about that, or are we going to wrap up? No, we'll wrap up. I yeah. Think. Otherwise, we're going to be another half an hour doing that, aren't we? Because we've got to yeah. download new drivers for it again. Mm. Fine. Okay. Right. Yeah, there we go then. Um, what's up, Galvani? Um, we're not on the arc at the moment. We've done our tests. Um, let's uh, switch back to base cam. So what we found is the arc performed well. It, it performed as well as we expected it to, basically. Look at the reviews for it and you'll see what to expect to get out of that. We didn't have, we, we haven't done extensive testing in gaming, but we didn't see any major crashes or any major errors from it, did we? It seems to be, at, at, for what we expected from it, yeah. it seems to be stable. The thing, the thing to check will be um, trying it directly into a couple of other monitors. Oh yeah, that's true. And yeah, just we, seeing what yeah. issues that vomits. We, we did have massive issues getting a capture set up from the card. And um, that certainly lends credence to the, the issues that people have reported of it not working on certain monitors. So it's entirely possible that we got really lucky with monitor compatibility. And we just happened to have a sufficiently, effectively dumb low end monitor. Yeah, and in terms of capture cards, we had to drop all the way down to a potato capture card um, for it to actually work. Yeah. Um, so, uh, however, driver wise, um, it seems to be okay, but more extensive testing is required. Uh, and as previously mentioned, we may well do an actual formal review of this graphics card because Caradog and I both want to get ah. practice doing graphics card reviews. Um, so uh, that's, some, that's something that we're going to look into, um, but no guarantee that that video will actually happen. Even if we record it, it might not get released, whatever. Yeah. So um, do a week of daily use with Twitch streaming. I mean, it depends. I mean, if you want to lend it to me, yeah. I'll take it home and I'll do a test run on it. Um, am I doing anything tomorrow? No. I'll do a test run on it during the day tomorrow. Please do a test run on Elden Ring on it tomorrow. Sure. Um, and well, I'll, if you're going to stream yeah, Elden yeah. Ring, please test Elden Ring. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I could test streaming on it and just say, I'm like, not even just, well, um, that there's two aspects we can do to this. I could stick it in my PC and game on it and stream from it. Yeah. Or I could stick it in as an encoder card and quick sync on it. I would I would game on it with quick 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 yeah. sync. Quick sync, yeah. Because we don't care about it as an encoder card because AV1 is not ready. Yeah. Um, that that's the biggest takeaway that we've found today. AV1 is not ready. Um, it's going to be, but it's not ready. You can't a you can't stream AV1 on this today in uh, any practical sh way. That's the takeaway. Um, so, um, so the next question is, um, uh, oh yeah, you yeah, we're on pass through at the moment. Fine. Yeah. yeah. We don't have capture on this, but well, I'll just see if we've got capture actually. Yeah. So just wondering if jiggling everything around has yeah. changed stuff, but it certainly doesn't look like it. Yeah. So it's capturing the moment we interact with it, it's died. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so yeah, weird capture, bizarre capture issues. I don't understand why yeah. moving the mouse makes a difference. Yeah, that is really strange. Um, okay, um, yeah, if you, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll take it home and I'll test it and I'll see if I can game and stream on it. Um, I'll test. I'll see what um, I'll see what Elden Ring's performance is like because we're limited to sixty FPS in Elden Ring. It's entirely possible that it will have no issues with Elden Ring. Um, and um, uh, if so, I can see whether we can stream on it, and yeah. I can, and then I can. That would be very interesting to say. Oh. I tried dailying the Arc A770 for a day as a main gaming graphics card that I stream from. Uh, Here's what sick. happened. So yeah, the fans are off. Don't, fair enough. There you go. Maybe it's just not warmed up yet. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's just not up to temperature yet. Wow. All right, then. Uh, Chris hitting... has dropped some suggestions. It Teltac was... supports them. Fair enough. It was hitting 120 at 1080p. In... Yeah. In, like, um, in terms of actual Spider-Man, so that's not terrible. Yeah, in terms of actual performance, it seems to be exactly what you expect. But then we already knew this because other people have tested games and they've said, yeah, it does this. It performs at it performs just below its price point, basically. Yeah. It's not a graphics card that we recommend buying, however, it works. And that is what it needs to do. It needs to work. Because that means that Intel can actually go and make a second generation of these that might actually be competitive. Yeah, basically. So yeah. However. Ah, interesting. Something about the very low settings breaks this card. Yeah. When we change yeah, when we change the preset, we're getting wild lighting changes. So there's some lighting setting it's using in there. Maybe something yeah. to do with global lighting. But even between low and very low. Interesting. Yeah. W I mean, we could dig into that and figure out what setting it is. It's it ambient like... occlusion. Ah. Uh, ambient. Okay, it doesn't like ambient occlusion. It doesn't like ambient occlusion being off. Off. Ah. Yeah. So you need it to be on SSAO for it to not look awful. Fair enough. HBA, interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. There'll always be one tech behind, but slowly catch up. Yeah, well, yeah, so pricey and slow, I think that's being a little bit harsh. It Again, no, the important thing is this is not a gaming, this is not a card that you should buy for a gaming PC. Yeah. Um, however, Intel don't need this card to do well right now. They just need it to exist. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, hopefully the second generation, like the, like you say, stuff like ray tracing and stuff like that, we haven't looked at ray tracing, but stuff like ray tracing is probably going to be a while before they catch up. But AMD isn't competitive on ray tracing either, and no one cares, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it actually matters. But yeah, you know, it's um I'll oh, so let me point the camera at the screen because we've got no capture at the moment. Uh bench cam with face. Up. Oh. Don't be bad, Caradog. Um yeah, please excuse the horrifying viewing angles. This is supposed angles. This is supposed to be an IPS screen. Um but yeah, it games. It's doing its it's doing its best. Yeah. Boff. Um, is that hard enough to view enough of the city? Yeah. What is that? You see that shadowing? Is that aliasing? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. I think it's where the character model is clipping oh, through the camera. Yeah, it, okay, yeah, it's the shadow of the ca yeah, ca shadow of the player model. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Oh no, there it was again. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what's that? What's that? <laughs> what's that? You can see that. What are those? What are those? I take it it doesn't do that on your 3090. Nope. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I will test this um, on Elden Ring. However, if it doesn't perform well, I won't stream on it because, as I say, at the moment, I actually, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm actually trying to do a, a series of very good streams right now. Um, but I'll take it home and I'll try it out. I can test some other things as well, you know. Um, one of my other friend groups is playing uh, Killing Floor 2 at the moment, and Killing Floor 2 is savage. So, you know, see how well that does. Ah! Did it die? Yeah, fine. This game is not the most stable game, so this doesn't, no. this doesn't prove anything. It's Spidey Sense, yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway, I think we're done today. Um, Absolutely. 
I've enjoyed this conversation in English. Yeah. We need to play the well. new version. Uh, yeah. All right. Spider-Man has crashed into a building. Absolutely. Uh, good. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, that's what we got. So, um, yeah, some results we expected, some results we weren't expecting. I was disappointed at the lack of um, OBS support and stuff like that. Like, we didn't check this in advance, and if we had, we would have known that that was going to be the case. Yeah. Or at least I didn't check in advance. So I thought OBS was going to show an, OB an AV1 option. Mm. And then the answer to that would be, look, it can stream in AV1. We just need yeah. Twitch to support it. But no, we don't even have it in OBS yet. Um, so, uh, it, yep, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Handbrake can do it. Um, well, yeah, let's smash out Handbrake. Yep. Um, so, yeah, as I say, this graphics card isn't going to change anyone's world, and I don't think you should buy one. Um, however, it works, and it exists, and that's what it needs to do. Yeah. And it working, existing, and it being out there is the main thing. Yeah. Because everyone's different configurations. Uh, we need to... Oh, gross. You know, everyone's different configurations and so on. Um, we'll hopefully feed back through the telemetry and so on to the driver teams and they'll be able to fix stuff. Yeah. And improve things. Which is kind of the main thing, is just a case of them actually yeah. having them out there now. It means they can do infinitely more testing effectively yeah. than they could do in... Uh, a studio. Yeah, I think it was. Um... Oh yeah, we don't have capture. Uh, I think it was. There we go. Bench cam with face. Um, I think it was uh, Linus on 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 last week's WAN show. Um, someone mentioned that someone made the observation. Haven't Intel been making GPUs with their iGPUs in their CPUs for years now? Why are they having so much trouble? And it's just you've got to keep in mind that a, a um, a gaming GPU of this scale is a completely different animal to an integrated GPU yeah. with completely different capabilities on a completely different scale with a completely different focus. So. Oh, I didn't check where this dumps videos. Oh, are well, you trying to smash out some test footage? Uh, there will see, actually be footage on this SSD if you want something for Handbrake to, to look at. There you go. I just wanted something so I could pull up the format. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you want to go to... Oh, if, you want, if you go to video... Yeah. There you go. Oh, there's a lot of options there. Um, yeah. It's showing NVENC. That, maybe that's just because the driver is installed. Yeah. Intel QSV. There's a second Intel yeah. QSV. So maybe if one of... I wonder... Oh, we're, we're not going to have one on the CPU. What? What do you mean there's a second one? Oh, that's H.265, yeah, I'm that's blind. Yeah, that's H.265. Yep. Ignore me! Yeah, VP8, VP9. No, that's it. Yeah, there's no AV... Yeah. Oh, there's, there is H.265 10-bit yeah. into a QSV. Uh, oh, was cool. this beta or the mainline release? Uh, this is just a standard release yeah, on, okay, from Handbrake yeah, so FR. I wasn't expecting it to have the AV1 option in there specifically. Yeah. I just wanted to see what options it gave. Fair enough, yeah. I mean, at the very least, it's, sh it's showing quick sync as an option. So that yeah. shows that at least the quick sync implementation is more or less seamless. Yeah. So anything that you're currently using quick sync on is yeah. probably just going to work with this straight away with no problems. And that's actually quite good. Yeah. Um, because this is the first time that quick sync has been available from such a quote unquote different location. Because up until now, the only place you'll find quick sync is on the CPU. So yeah. the fact that software is seeing QuickSync as an available option on a brand new PCI Express device yeah. with effectively no changes, that's that's pretty good. Very well. Okay, right, that's it. We're going to wrap up, everyone. So, um, so yeah. Um, I'm going to have a quick look through the chat just to see if there's anything else. You've engorged this conversation in ermine or goring. Good. Thank you, everyone, for enjoying it. Any cider tips for a first-time drinker? Um, play the field. Uh, figure out what you like. Understand the difference between dry cider and sweet cider. Um, because if you go in on a dry cider and you don't like it, that doesn't mean you don't like cider. Um, sweet and dry is a thing. Same with beers. There's a, there's a big spectrum. Um, and, um, yeah, 
there, there was a comment on someone recently saying that they tried some Stouffer Press and they were not thoroughly impressed. And I want to remind people that Stouffer Press is not the best cider in the world. However, it's a very good cider that you can find on most supermarket shelves. It's not going to stack up against a craft cider. Um, however, oh, yeah. for a cider that you can yeah. just walk into any supermarket and buy in a can on the shelf, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, if you compare it versus something like Strongbow, it's a different world, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> you shush, Chris. Be reasonable. Westerns make a lot of different off-brands. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, cool. For video editing, QuickSync has much better support than NVIDIA and AMD. Possibly, um, if you yeah. are using, if you are doing video editing and you're looking for good encoder supports, uh, especially if you're using old software like old versions of Vegas, look out for Vocoder. V O K O D E R. It's a third-party video encoder with plugins for a lot of common video editing programs that will allow you to NVENC on export. So, for example, I I edit in Vegas 14, which is archaic. And because I've got Vocoder, I can export using NVENC from Vegas 14. And that's actually quite a big deal because it, uh, it makes my exports like twice as fast, easily twice as fast. Um, so yeah, I'm still heavily CPU limited, but it, does, um, it means the CPU is only having to do the image transforms, not the actual final frame export. Um, all of the final frame encoding goes onto the graphics card which takes a lot of load off of the CPU. So yeah, uh, that's it. Blah, 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 blah. Cider made from pears is less than common taste. It's hard, yeah, an actual genuine Perry is worth trying. It's just very difficult to find a genuine Perry and not pear flavored cider, which is apple cider flavored with pears. Um, yeah, that's it. Sitting on a street corner with three litre bottles of Strongbow. I've never, I've never seriously had Strongbow. I did joke to Caradog the other day that we should get some white lightning in just for the lols. Just so we I've can... I've never had it. No, neither have Literally I. Literally never had it. Yep, I've never so tried white time. lightning. Just my, my knowledge is that it, as far as I know, it's battery acid. <laughs> Um, so I'm kind. I kind of want to get some white lightning just so we can try some and be like, "This is battery acid. Who would drink this?" You know. Yeah. The answer being sixteen-year-olds. Apparently. Some, yeah. I um, presume it's in a similar category to like White Claw. I think is an American brand of yeah, that, stuff like that. I've heard that word, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. Don't know what I'm missing. Chief, what, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, Chris. Ugh. White lightning, yeah, I could melt ceramic with my piss after that. <laughs> Stay classy, Chris. We're off. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we will not be back next week because I'm away at a LAN party. Are you busy next week? I am away. I yep. am busy. Yeah, both Caradog and I are away next week on separate activities. Um, so there's no podcast next week. Oh, that reminds me, actually. That means, okay, there. That, that actually, one of the videos I've recorded had a shout out saying, by the way, we do a podcast on Saturdays. I should probably make sure that I do the other one this week so I don't do a shout out for the podcast the week before we're not doing the podcast. <laughs> that would yes. be very unfortunate. Um, anyway, thanks for tuning in. We won't be back next week, but we'll be back the week after that with something Absolutely. else. Indeed. Thank uh, you. White Claw is a carbonated here. vodka drink. Uh, okay. Yes. Oh, right. yes. Sorry, I wasn't meaning to infer that it was the same as in oh, cider. Yeah. It was in the same category of. It's a cheap drink that teenagers get drunk on. It's yes. It is that which is drunk. Anyway, moving on. Thank you for coming. Good night. <laughs> Bye. Uh, right. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. <laughs> with our with our remaining fifty percent viewership. Bye. Ta-ra. Have fun. <laughs>